Welcome to The Lux Files, a podcast for occultists about occultists. I'm your host, Sean, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Be sure to subscribe to The Lux Files wherever you get your podcasts to stay up to date on all the new episodes. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 28 of the Lux Files. I'm here today with Edward Reeb, uh, VH Fratzer BT. He's a uh, yoga teacher. He is an author and he is the host of the Esoterra Nerd podcast, which is one of my favorite podcasts. Oh, good. So if you've, yeah, so if you've never heard it, heard of it before, I definitely, definitely, definitely say check it out. So, hello, hello, Frater. Hello. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? I am fantastic. I'm always fantastic. Life, life's pretty good. How's yeah. life in India? Oh, it's good. Uh, uh, every once in a while, it gets very warm and humid, and the electricity goes out. So, for a little while, things aren't like quite as like great, you know. But then right. the AC kicks back in, and then everything's good again. So, <laughs> well, here here in Canada, it gets very cold, and mm. the power goes out. So, I have Similar. zero sympathy for you. <laughs> Absolutely zero sympathy. I understand. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, go. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. When I lived in Texas, <laughs> uh, uh, three months after I moved to Texas from Canada, I moved to mm. Houston, which is, it's very humid there. Mm. Um, we got hit by uh, Hurricane Ike. Oh. And I was actually fortunate, like, I never lost power. I eventually lost water the next day, but I never lost power. So I had internet, I had cable, I had air conditioning oh, the entire cool. time. But some people went, like, four months without power. Mm. And, you know, the heat and the humidity... Like, it, it certainly gets to you, but yeah. um, at the end of the day, I'll, I'll take the heat and humidity with no power over snow with no power. So, yeah. Well, that's so not... Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, yeah, I think, uh, you know, way back on the line, the, you know, the lack of melanin, the albinism of the Northern Europeans, um, you know, just got the hell out of there, you know. And I think that there's a gene because... There's the people that stayed, and they fascinate me because because my folks, 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 you know, they they got the hell out of there, and who knows where they went before they landed in New York, and then they they couldn't stay in New York, so they came to California, and then I'm sitting there in California for 40 years, I'm like I gotta get out of here, I gotta go somewhere, and so now I'm in Goa, and uh, but there's people that never left the Netherlands. It's so weird. I don't understand. Right. <laughs> or, or like the north part of Norway, which yeah, <laughs> or Siberia, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't get it. But hey, you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever. What was that yeah. Sam Kinison years ago? Send them U-Hauls. <laughs> <laughs> he was right. talking about sand, though. <laughs> yeah, nothing yeah. grows here. This is sand. <laughs> Why do when you live you, here? Uh, when you moved to India, was mm -hmm. that? Um, like, was the plan, you know, of course, without, you know, being able to see into the future, was right. the plan when you moved to India was like, okay, this is a permanent move, or is it part of like a five-year plan or something like that? It, that's a, a, a good question. I love talking about that. Um, it, th there was, uh, generally speaking, I mean, at least I was talking big about I'm leaving and never coming back. But I was mm -hmm. kind of talking like I'm, I'm going to live in Nepal and I'm going to live on a mountain or in a cave. I'm uh, going to stop using air conditioning and cell phones and uh, stop wearing clothes and just follow the, the in the footsteps of Padma Sambhava and just see where <laughs> it leads me. You know, I just had no idea, you know. But then, of course, it didn't go exactly like that. Um, right. I, uh, I had, uh, I, there's uh, some folks you might, might uh, look into possibly, you know, see if they're, if they're a good fit. Um, for the podcast, uh, uh, my, my buddy Kay down in South Africa with the, uh, the Gnostic Church of the Black Sun, Kuho Yu. So, so when, I, when I started Esoteric Nerd, um, I, I ended up uh, meeting this guy on, you know, Facebook. Uh, he's in South Africa and runs a, a temple called the Gnostic Church of the Black Sun, Kuho Yu. No relation to the, uh, 
to the black son of, uh, you know, World War II era Germany. That's a totally mm -hmm. different thing. Um, and uh, yeah, so I went and hung, hung out with him for 10 days. That was the first thing I did. And uh, basically, I, you know, I, I went through, I quit being a full-time Golden Dawn culty. <laughs> uh, you know, I did that for 18 years and it, it got old. And so I quit and then I ended up deciding I wanted to be a yoga teacher instead of sitting at a desk. So I did that, but then yoga wasn't going to pay the bills. So I became an Uber driver. And then, uh, but then I ended up getting divorced and uh, then my, I, I sold everything and just gave everything away and bought a one-way ticket. And, uh, and so, so I went to Africa because my buddy was going through a similar life change at the same time and I thought it was a sign that I should go hang out with him and uh, that was fun so they the uh the, the cover photo that I, I keep as my co cover photo 90 percent of the time on the uh Edward Breen page that you know has the magic stuff that's mm -hmm. me with uh with those guys and uh so okay. so so after that I came to Nepal just with one thing in mind and that was that the Buddha was born there in Lumbini so uh, so I was going to do a pilgrimage. I was going to go to Lumbini, and then I was going to go to India and visit the three pilgrimage sites there. And, uh, and so I did. I, I mean, I went to Lumbini, and, but then oddly, I got a job. What? You know, and so I, I started teaching yoga in, uh, it just sort of happened. And I, I guess I wanted it. You know, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where in past tense, you can see how you manifested something. But at the time, it's like, what am I doing? You know, um, but right. I went to a yoga class in Kathmandu and the teacher didn't show up, you know, and there was a, a, a Dutch couple there. And so I got on my phone and I called the number on the door and the owner of the yoga studio was like, oh, no, well, OK. Here's what's gonna. Uh, I'll I'll get on my my scooter and I'm coming from Patan, so it might take half an hour. But you just go in there and just do some yoga. And the key is is on the latch in the there's a door to your left, and you go around and this that's where the key is. And so I said, well, I'm a yoga teacher, so I'll just teach a class. And he, so he showed up, and I'm leading this uh, sort of dynamic, not not strict ashtanga vinyasa but like you know california vinyasa i like to call it right um like uh vinyasa based flow and he just kind of watched and he was like okay you know and so then i i became the teacher there the teacher at that place um and uh so, so it was either sometimes it was three times a day uh other times two usually just one and then can you help it hear that helicopter we get helicopters here sometimes. But I think it's uh, no, no. Oh, good. Oh, I love Zoom. Oh, it's so good at cutting out really obnoxious things. Um, so anyway, I got a job. Uh, okay, let me let me move move along in the story. Uh, and I but I taught for four months. You know, like just living in Kathmandu, teaching yoga, and then just staring at interesting buildings and kind of like. I mean, I made friends and there, there was a Japanese guy who's a businessman and he was like kind of a big influence on me. I was at an odd point in my life and he, he came on and said, okay, your internet presence tells me that you're a crazy person and that I should run screaming. So why don't you delete this stuff? <laughs> and I'm like, that's a good idea. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but we, we got drunk a lot. So then I was on this thing where I was like, getting rip roaring drunk and screaming to the point where I'm red in the face at night. And then four hours later, waking up and teaching yoga. And, uh, and so I did that for a while. It was weird. You know, what was I doing? I don't know But I definitely yeah. wasn't sitting on a mountaintop or in a cave. So, so eventually I, uh, came to India and, uh, you know how it is like when, uh, I, well, someone had sent me a friend request seven years ago now. A very very lovely uh you know young woman um well that's not the most flattering picture she'd hate me if i showed that one um <laughs> anyway she's in the other room right now um so you can kind of see where that story's going but uh so so we were friends on facebook and i was always kind of like wow you know here's a person who is i mean speaks english very well first of all can articulate what she's saying and uh in english and is frustrated with uh 
you know, her cage that she's in and, and uh, kind of is reaching out, you know, to, to whoever's out there, you know, like, and, and I kind of received that energy. And you know, at the time I was like, it kind of struck me, but I didn't think much of it, you know. Oh, anyway, mm -hmm. long story short, long story short, I came to India and I, I just sent a little message like, hey, I'm in, in Delhi, why don't we have coffee? And uh, then it was a whirlwind. We went straight to Taj Mahal. I mean, first we went to Iskhan. I, I just thought coffee, but she, she came to the coffee place and said, okay, come with me. And we got in an auto, which is like a little motorized rickshaw and right. to, to Iskhan, which is the internationally famous uh, Hare Krishna cult. Um, you know, when people, you know, the, the airports in the 70s and the movies always had the Hare Krishnas. That's where right. everybody's, everybody's copy of the Bhagavad Gita is from Iskhan, the, the lineage on the back to the, to the, to the bald guy, but I, I should have more respect. I don't know his name, but anyway. Um, so yeah, so we went there and we're like giggling and posing in front of, uh, of paintings of Radha and Krishna, who it turns out are like her ancestors. <laughs> she's, um, she's from the, the, the same cast as uh, Krishna. Like before, okay. Krish, before Krishna, they were a, a dairy farming cast. And then after Krishna, they're Krishna's cast. <laughs> you know, they're like, mm. they, there's a, there's a formal, I, I forget. She, I hopefully, hopefully she can't hear me. <laughs> well, anyway, I, I, I won't go into too much detail about that because I'm kind of ignorant and it's when she explains it, then I feel like I know what she's talking about, but I don't think I have the confidence to explain it, <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, it's, right, it's right, so, yeah. so I was there for four months, all of four months. And uh, then I said, okay, I need to go back to California and I need to go to court and I need to deal with uh, a divorce and I need to, you know, um, send all my things to India. And then uh, that might take me two to five months, hopefully no more than that. And then I'll be back and and, and she, at that point, she really wanted to believe me, but that had a sneaking, nagging suspicion that I was full of shit or, you know, that something was going to come up. And I was, I, I've realized that my place is here in Los Angeles. And I'm like, that is not going to happen, but I'll, I'll show you. Right. you know? So, so then uh, the only plan was at that point to, you know, move to India. Like I had to tell everybody, um, you know, I a sister and a few best friends that are kind of like, well, I can't wait till you're done traveling because I miss you, buddy. And so I'm like, oh, bum, you know, by the way, I'm nice. forever. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so that was that. And then and then we, we shifted and then we were in Delhi and we did a lot of traveling within India and we went to Thailand before everything closed down with COVID and everything. We right. were down in, we were down in Mysore doing yoga teacher training and uh, Thai yoga body work training, which is his school. They avoid using the word massage because especially when you put Thai and massage together in the same sentence, people's right. minds start to go a particular direction. It's really not that. It's uh, something they, they, that they, they claim lineage to the physician of the Buddha himself. So it, it, instead of where yoga is designed, Hatha yoga is designed to get us to where we can sit in Padmas, Pad, Padmasana or uh, uh, any meditative posture well enough, you know, and, and with all the, the pranayama and opening everything up to where we could really, you know, get somewhere. Then the, the, depending on which school it is, get where, you know, is it Kundalini, is it Zen, is it enlightenment, is it what, you know. Um, but uh, aside from that, yeah, so, so the story goes that the Buddhist physician said, you know, these you have all these people sitting all day, you know, and they're, they have aches and pains. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to lay them back, we're going to do this. And so that's where Thai massage comes from. Uh, the one where the, the stretchy one was, you know, no oil or anything like that. So we were getting trained in that. And uh, that was fun. Painful, very painful when the, the teacher would grab onto your sternal clitomastoid and just squeeze and you're like, I don't want to die. But he stops, and I'm like, "Oh, I feel so good all of a sudden." <laughs> it's really weird. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, then COVID hit, and so uh, then they were saying, "Oh, we're about to shut everything down, and no more flights as of tomorrow." So we're like, "Okay, we're leaving." You know, we got to go back to Delhi, and then uh, then they we I just was out of laziness. I just kept renewing my tourist visa, and uh, 
And so at that point, it was, you know, it became urgent that I had to like, because they weren't allowing tourists, you know, or they were ex extending, allowing the tourists that are here that if they didn't want to go back, if the situation was worse back home and they were safer here, then they were letting them stay. It was nice. But, uh, you know, but of course I didn't want to go out because they wouldn't let me back, you know, if I, if I left. So, right. so, um, so yeah, we, we hurried up and got all the legal stuff. We, we had gotten married. We had had a ceremony down in uh, Tamil, which is the southern tip of India, and um, the beautiful traditional small village temple with uh, her sister. She's like a soul sister, like uh, not a biological sister, but she, you know, and nobody okay. you'll say, "Oh, your friend." No, my sister. You know, okay, it's your sister. Uh, so yeah, uh, my sister-in-law. My uh, I forget the Hindi word for that. I'm so I've been here three years and I can count to 15 and I, I can I can order vegetables and that's it um, <laughs> but <laughs> I can kind of understand half of what people are saying right I'm sorry I've been babbling but now I'm the guest you know like it's such a different so this is my first time as a guest on a podcast of a person that I've met recently you know uh, right uh, when, yeah. when, when RC and I do it it's like he's on my podcast we've known each other since we were kids you know, so yeah so yeah, so it's yeah. fun to be like oh it's okay for me to ramble you know I don't have to stop yeah I was so, I was a guest on a podcast recently and I'm like oh this is nice because I don't have to direct the the uh the whole conversation and yeah. you know and I don't I don't have to care about anything exactly I and I, I, I actually, I'll, I'll tell you, just I have a premeditated uh, plan to derail that whole thing and turn this into a two-way conversation, and then I'll ask you a lot of questions. But anyway, that yeah, comes later. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, because, yeah, people have that expectation. But what I, when I'm meeting someone for the first time, you know, I, I like to have a conversation. And, you know, that's, yeah. that, that yeah. involves... And so then it's recorded for posterity and everybody can listen to it and have the experience. But then a few people are like, the host of this podcast has a bad habit of talking, you know, uh, no, <laughs> it's not exactly the formula that you're looking for, you know, I guess <laughs> people get stuck on structure. I mean, with anything, like, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Robert McKee and all that crap, you know, like uh, the story structure that you're not allowed to write anything for television that doesn't fit into Har Dan Harmon's circle, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> same thing with podcasts, but, you know, it's just a, it's an, it's an MP3 file that people can listen to. You can do whatever you want with that. You can make it musical, you can make it. No. You know, I like I said, I'm so casual with this podcast. Like, I'm just here for the conversation, really. Like, I, yeah. I want to learn, you know, about the guests, of course, but uh, the conversation is going to go where the conversation is going to go. I don't, yeah. care. I don't care how long it is. Like, I like the, like, um, I, you know, uh, RC and I, we went four and a half hours. <laughs> yeah, um, <I> that. <laughs> yeah, recently, um, I had Elfie Music on and we went, uh, 17 minutes i love it i love it oh, yeah you yeah. know yeah it's, it's just it's just it's nice uh fun and it's casual and you on, know on, like, on a certain level it podcasts are kind of a a, a non-creepy way to to say hey man you want to facetime yeah <laughs> to a total yeah, no, totally <laughs> yeah 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 totally like yeah, maybe this person's an interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah this person's interesting i want to talk to them and yeah. it would be be creepy for me to be like oh hey you want to facetime stranger but Excuse you know me, i you have, have a podcast that might be good for your career exactly. <laughs> well yeah, yeah, yeah exactly i love it i love it so yeah that's that's you know that's basically what i uh why i started the podcast uh six months ago although i had it in my head for like ages before that but i'm like oh i'll just wait till you know i'm not as busy and i'm not as busy with with my business well of course that's never going to happen because i yeah. just keep getting busier and busier, and busier. so yeah. i finally started doing it but no that was you know the my my whole mo i'm like i just want to have conversations with people and it's yeah. going to go and i really don't care you can say yeah. whatever you want. and <laughs> you know it is what it is it's just fun for me it was like a champagne bottle in the beginning that uh i you know with all the secrecy and stuff and uh, you know mm. kind of being in a cult is like even if you've 
rebelled against secrecy and you decide to share it with people, they just sort of look at you and kind of back slowly back away. So it's still kind of isolated, you know? Yeah. So, so then getting out of that and then kind of getting three years distance and space from it. And then, uh, I, it was like, there was this, uh, you know, 18 years worth of life that I, that was just there in my memory that I can't do anything with. There's very few people that are interested in hearing about it. Yeah. And, uh, and that all these characters that I knew from those times. And so it just sort of culminated and then it just kind of, it was like ready and it sort of exploded at the beginning. But then I, I, it served its initial function and then yeah. it, it changed over time, you know, like it, 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 from, from episode, you know, one to 20, and that was different from 20 to 40 and 50. And then in the hundreds, it's totally different. Like, yeah, my, I'm different. My, you know, attitude's different and everything. So <laughs> people change, you know, it's been six years. Of course it's going to change. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Those uh, first uh, initial um, episode, I mean, like I said, I, I like your, your podcast. So I oh, mean, yeah. I, I, I definitely, recommend, yeah, I, I definitely <laughs> recommend it to people, but so I'm, I'm qualifying my next statement by saying that first, because I don't mean to downplay the, um, oh no, yeah. Uh, further like the i'm the, not sensitive the about it episodes, <laughs> not yeah, like yeah. That, but, but the initial episodes when it was uh well i can't remember their names right well my stepdad uh, was the first guest it was really weird my ex-stepdad but he, you you had you had like like um some aquarians uh, the source family um, no you had, no you you had it was you and a, two other guys all the time oh right right uh, well there was enoch the aquarian and then uh zarathustra the aquarian you mean like episodes one through ten or or oh well there was in, in the 60s or in the 50s uh joe shantz uh started co-hosting that's it yeah yeah, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sadly, he passed away right um, yeah, yeah yeah but those were some good episodes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're really, really good. Those are those are the ones that uh, got me into your podcast. Mm. So it was like, oh, I got to go all the way back to the beginning. Uh, and, yeah, and uh, yeah, the start. podcast got me back in touch with Joe, and that was such a blessing. And then he co-hosted for a while, and that was a blessing. It's all such a blessing, you know. It's just yeah, be, yeah. Be able to, I and it, I, yeah, it does function that way even with old friends because like you know, um, getting back in touch with Joe Zabinski recently, well, relatively recently, you know, we were kind of tight back in the day. We were close and, and kind of had a, a good, uh, I don't know, hard, a shared brain space, you know, that you can kind of have with some people. And then, but because mm -hmm. it was so, because it was so culty back then, when he left, no, nobody was supposed to talk to him ever again, you know? So it was like, right. And it's so yeah. sort of like, gosh, I can't believe I went along with that crap. And, you know, it's, it's, it's really interesting looking in the mirror and looking back in time and all that. But geez, yeah. You know? Cause you, you joined the GD, like you were fairly young. 16. Yeah. 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 And why, what led to that? Like, were you, aware mm. of golden dawn mm. previous to that yeah like yeah, good good question whatever. so my yeah, yeah I, you might have noticed the the pope Runyon gave a good review for my dad's book recently did you know did you catch that one? Oh no i'm so behind. oh okay oh no okay yeah, okay so so yeah. my dad my dad knew poke uh back in the 70s when he was starting the church of hermetic science that later became the order ordo templi astartes um, and he's sort of a big, you know, uh, he's well known kind of in Thalamic circles, which it turns out is ironic because he himself considers himself more of a Golden Dawn purist, except mm -hmm. for the fact that he also does the OTA, which has a very Thalamic spirit. If I, I mean, I hope he can forgive my saying so. I'm not saying that, uh, you know, he has anything in common with Crowley that he shouldn't, just that 
the things that he does have in common is the uh, the challenging of the status quo and the challenging of our assumptions about the symbols and archetypes and ideas and gods and how we should relate with them. I mean, the Bible tells us to relate with uh, ancient Canaanite gods as demons that we should, you know, s smite in the name of the Lord, you know, and here he is invoking them. So, mm -hmm. so that's, that's uh, uh, subversive. And I appreciate that. Um, I personally am not drawn to it as a as, as something that I want to participate in, but I can definitely appreciate what he's doing yeah, with that. Yeah. And it's interesting to me that he's also the, I think the, the impurator, or maybe if he still is, when I interviewed him on episode 20 something, uh, he was the impurator of a, of a temple from the lineage of uh, Chris Monastre and, um, and going through, through Chick Cicero. Um, so, so there's that sort of fork. I don't know. It's, I'm like a Gen Xer talking about things that nobody even cares about anymore. There was the, the fork of, uh, that, that Chris Monastre and Chick Cicero and David Griffin all used to like be the chiefs of sitting in the East of people's initiations. And then they had right. their falling outs in various directions. And you could say, this is the good guy. That's the bad guy, but it's really more kind of complex. Like, you know, like the boys yeah. or something, you know, it's, it's not as much like a Superman situation, you know, um, right. right. <laughs> more like invincible or something. You know? um, no, no, no. There, I, Chicks and Swords are nice. I, I especially tell the, you know, but uh, yeah, I never really jived with David Griffin, to be honest. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, uh, he, yeah. You know. <laughs> it's, you okay. know, what are you going to do? But I mean, he has, I know he has students that are listeners of Esoteric Nerd. And, and so I, I only, I only call him uh, Gargamel. I think that was the name we came up with for him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh, shoot. I lost track of the question. Is it this stuff? You know? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Um, we, we, no, I was just asking because you started. Uh, oh, yeah. When, okay. That's a fun when you story. 16 and, oh, yeah, and how that that came about because you didn't go Gargamel, you went Voldemort. Right. Well, that was sort of by by where we lived, you know. So, okay, yeah. here's, here's what happened. Um, when I was 10 years old, this is how I'll tell the story. First person perspective, not a, none of this omniscient narrator crap. Um, when I was 10 years old, my mom and my, well, they had gotten divorced already, but my mom still owned the they were going to split the lot. My mom was going to use the empty lot and they were going to sell the one with the house on it and split the money, blah, 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 divorce. And so, but then she was, she had a master plan for the house she was going to build on that lot, the second lot. And, uh, and she designed it. She was an architect. She designed, uh, while I have people's ear, the uh, Paznaz, the uh, Pasadena Church of the Nazarene, everything except for the little cube on top, uh, that whole structure, that whole interesting design with the sort of, combination of like a modern a modern art meets ziggurat kind of thing that was her interesting. Um, yeah and she designed it but then architecture took a dive in 87 and they were only started building those rubber stamp house communities you know uh out on the fringes of the the suburban you know uh the greater whatever areas you know how they're all kind of just the same two houses over and over uh, with yeah. slightly different shades of tan or whatever. And uh, yeah. so so that that kind of happened, I guess, in 87. So after that, she could only get work making malls, you know, designing malls and shopping centers. And she wasn't really fulfilled by that. Um, mm. Because she was into Frank Lloyd Wright and stuff. Like she went and, and knocked on Lloyd Wright's door and they dragged him down to her school so he could like give a guest lecture and stuff. Nice. So yeah, yeah, fun stuff. Um, so anyway, uh, so I said, when, when we do our new house, I, I said, I want my walls black. I want my ceiling black. I want black carpet. I want black uh, bed sheets. I want a black desk. And so she was like, well, yeah, let me talk to you about something. The black isn't necessarily evil, but it's sometimes it's evil, you know? And then she was saying, you know, I'm a little worried because you have this inclination toward occult things and, uh, you know, Okay, so I'm going to tell this story. I've never told this story publicly, but it's not, it's, it's just a story. It's a, at this okay. point, no one alive can confirm or deny the side of the story I'm going to tell. 
Um, <laughs> according to Pope, the story is total BS. It's just not based in any reality. But okay. for some reason, this was the story that my mom told me when I was 10 years old, was that uh, once upon a time, your father was uh, friends with this magician guy called Pope Runyon, and he wanted to start this thing called the OTA, and your dad didn't want anything to do with it, so he sent some kind of Canaanite god or demon or whatever over, and uh, then the walls were pounding, and your sister woke up and said, Mommy, Mommy, the walls are pounding, and a bunch of voices were chanting Ghostland, and your dad said, uh, it's messing with my motor nerves. And I said, well, get rid of it. And he said, well, I want to see what it wants first. And, and uh, she said, don't see what it wants, get rid of it. And he said, what did you say? And, uh, and then she started like, she was, she was raised Episcopal. So she started praying to Mary and Jesus. And suddenly there was light and the scent of roses and everybody was safe. And she felt like they were in the arms. Of, and so she told me that story, right? And that kind of fucked me up. So I right. said, I, I, I said, I need to be baptized. And she said, why? And I said, because I need God to know I'm on his side. And, uh, you know, because I mean, based on that story, all this shit's real. There's, if there's demons, there's angels. If there's all of that, if there's Satan, there's God. So I guess I better get my shit together. You know, like grandma says, and I keep put Jesus in my heart and all that shit, you know? And uh, so she said, uh, Okay, and then we went to this Lutheran church, but I, I kept it secret from my dad, you know, because he was a, a like a tantric Buddhist who was into hermeticism and okay. tarot cards and stuff, you know. And so, so then, uh, so you know, the priest told the congregation, you know, uh, I asked this young man why he wanted to be baptized, and he said that there's a war going on between heaven and hell, and he wanted God to know that he's on God's side. And that's why he wanted to be baptized. And everybody was like, oh, you know, like, hmm, interesting. Oh, he has a point, whatever they were thinking. I don't know. Right. And uh, so then, so I was 10 years old. And then, but meanwhile, I was learning tarot from my dad. My, he had already taught me Tree of Life. And, and he was, he had taught me how to do the version of, you know, what they could loosely call Tibetan tantric Buddhist meditation that actually came from Italy by way of uh, <laughs> Russia and the guy who funded the czar in his struggle against the uh, revolution, <laughs> uh, you know, that like got the hell out of there before they lynched him and, and, and then took his money and ran and, and then started teaching Tibetan Buddhism in California, Hollywood Hills. So that's interesting. Um, and uh, so, yeah, well, anyway, long story short, my dad died. Uh, of congestive heart failure in September of uh, 1993. And I was 15. And, you know, he, he had his anger issues. He had, mm -hmm. he had awkwardness issues with, I don't know, with basic things. I mean, you know, he was in his head. He was kind of like what they call a mental yogi. Like there's like different types of yogis. So he was, he was all about the mind. He was like, I'm okay. you know, going to be the master of mindness you know and so he was a college professor and and you know so uh so after he died i i told my mom i feel like you know my teacher's gone i he was he taught me everything i know about the astral and about um you know all these things and uh i don't have anybody to ask questions anymore i mean my mom kind of told me everything she remembered him teaching her when things were good before I was born apparently um and uh so so first we became wicked you know she wasn't going to let me go off on my own as a 15 year old and and uh you know so she and I joined together the, well we started taking classes at the juridic craft of the wise of America so you and I have a little bit in common there too yeah, um, yeah. down in Long Beach at the eye of the cat our teacher was sterling I wonder if I'm allowed to say that. I didn't say his last name. Besides, that's probably not his real name. Anyway, right. um, so for two years, we took classes there. But in, after one year, uh, my mom found a little flyer, you know, um, that said, uh, your mind has no boundaries, no doubt. And uh, it was an advertisement for the, uh, you know, the zinc order. And, uh, and it was calling itself the, the, Hermetic Order of the Eternal Golden Dawn, I think at the time, or just the Order right. of the Eternal Golden Dawn, something like that. And uh, and so she knew enough. She remembered 
Now this gets kind of another interesting thing, and I and this will help clear if anybody is like, well, what if that story about Pope running it is true? You know, this will help clear Pope's name, you know, because I found out later when I interviewed Pope and he and I kind of talked about some of this stuff, because of course I wanted to bring it up. I brought it up when I was 20, but we didn't really talk until I was 38, you know, so, yeah. so, uh, and we brought it up like, you know, in, a, in the context of an alt magic battle we were having, you know, so this is like weird. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I'm losing track of my thought process again, aren't I? Um, so, so yeah, so, so we found the flyer and she knew, so, so my dad had told my mom that she remembered him saying that Golden Dawn was good, but Crowley was bad. And okay. I later found out from Pope Runyon that when he started out in the early seventies, he was into Crowley, but then after a few years, he decided, you know what? Golden Dawn, good, Crowley, bad. And he told as much to my dad who repeated it to my mom. <laughs> so it, so in my quest to become the Horace to Pope Runyon's set, the, the Simba to his scar, I, uh, I, I followed his advice <laughs> and joined the Golden Dawn. <laughs> kind of funny, right? You know, funny, yeah. funny how things happen. And, uh, but of course we didn't know it, that, you know, the way it was back then, you know, nobody knew who this leader guy was. And it was like, at that level, there was just only rumors of who the leader was. And it's like, well, why does he wear a brown robe and everybody else wears a black robe? And they all seem to get quiet when he comes in the room. I think he's the head guy, you know? So it was sort of on that level. I'm, I'm writing a book called The Esoteric Narrative. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm calling him Bob Copperfield. And, uh, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how, because the repetition of the Prestean order of the limited value international trademark might get old, but, uh, but I, I do want to use that at some point because it's just so spot on, you know, um, but, uh, yeah, so wait. that's how it happened. That's how it happened initially. Then, then my mom passed away shortly after that. I mean, uh, okay. three, three years later, and then you know, I was sort of like, gosh, you know, I, I was, for one thing, I was like good PR, you know, to have like the orphan son who's the second generation. And by the way, he's blonde and we've given him the red chair in the middle, you know. Um, so there was a bit of nepotism, you know, uh, and, uh, you, you know, whatever. I mean, like when, after they invited me in and then, and then I joined the email group and then I looked back into the older emails and when, when he had said, well, I want to initiate Judy's son and everybody was like, Oh, Judy, I love Judy. What's her son like, you know? And so it really wasn't, you know, it, it, everybody else had to prove themselves and do all kinds of, you know, things, but they, but people tended mm -hmm. to kiss my ass more, you know, and I, I took advantage of that in various ways. And then later came to terms with, all of that you know but uh but anyway so i don't know yeah so so it just sort of it became my family you know uh in a very dysfunctional and uh emotionally you know dependent way uh, mm -hmm. and then you know i had to go through a lot of processes and the order changed a lot too and it went through its processes and i i didn't want to I didn't want to just walk out and make a scene, you know? And so, so I, I, my exit was, I think the first possible opportunity to just sort of like to make a graceful exit and say, thank you, you know, for all the fish. <laughs> like, uh, so, dolphins, you know? like how long did you come to like a realization at, at some point that you're like, I, I need to leave this order. Mm. And then it took X amount of time. Before Actually, you no. Edit. No, it was, uh, I was, I was totally committed uh, to do it for the rest of my life and the rest of eternity, you know, and, uh, you know, and then after a lot of things changed, I didn't really entertain the idea. I mean, that's how kind of like into it, you know, I mean, they make you repeat your vow of eternity. Mm -hmm. that Scientology has something similar in the Sea Org, I'm sure. And it's sort of, you know, it's. The priests probably do something similar every year. They have to retake their priestly oath, you know, and, and, uh, but in our order, we would have to, someone would cut us. We would be on a cross and someone would cut us while we repeated the 
oath to of service to the order, you know, um, on good every Good Friday, and uh, so yeah, you know. So, but then then uh, when things had changed so much, and I was so jaded, and I, I had done a lot of DMT, you know, <laughs> I had started to kind of take control, and and I I of of my own kind of spiritual path too, instead of just doing and teaching the things that they handed me and said to mm -hmm. do. I started uh, going searching outside. First, Alan Watts. He was my first kind of island of sanity <laughs> in in that ocean of BS. You know, uh, he, he, I think he, he serves that for a lot of people, uh, especially with cult survivor, because because ship quote whatever word that is. Uh, you know, because he he lays it all out pretty clearly in a way that it can be self empowering and self. Uh, um, you know, steering, you know, kind of like you can, it's okay to, to not know, and it's okay to be the leader of your own, you know, rather than thinking somebody else knows the answer, just know that nobody knows the answer, and uh, do your best, you know, and, and, you know, and then uh, he presents a lot of different philosophies, but he himself doesn't stick to any of them, you know, and, and like nothingness, everythingness, multiplicity oneness you know and 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 beautiful poetry and scriptures and traditions behind each one not only that but you know there's decorations like uh you know all the tibetan uh, colors and you know all this and um so that was really helpful and and he recommended shobo genzo but he said unfortunately it hasn't been translated into english but of course the recording was from the 70s and so i looked on google and there it was in english and so i bought the four volume set of Shobo Genzo, which was when Dogen, do you know about Dogen? Oh, this, my story is branching into something else. I've told this sure. story so many times on my podcast that I've had to stop telling it. So I'm very excited. Um, so Dogen, gosh, the long version or the short version? The short version. Um, so Dogen, uh, he was, he grew up Pure Land Buddhist, which basically means that if you pray to Amitabha daily, then you get to go to the Pure Land in your next life which is a place where you can meditate without bugs bothering you and, you know, death and distractions and, mm -hmm. you know, and then you can attain nirvana from there. So it's kind of like, all right. And so Dogen was raised in that. And then he, his mother passed away when he was very young. And so he wasn't really satisfied with what he was getting from his local temple. And so he went all the way to across the sea and into China and he found the, the, the Soto branch of, the Chan, uh, which is of course uh, Zen, you know, or he was he was the bridge that made Chan into Zen. Uh, he spent a few years there. Oh, I've heard you tell this story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But, so, but it's a good story, so keep going. Yeah, yeah. So he 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 spent some time there, and he had his satori, as they say, and uh, then he came back, and he was sort of brilliant. I think he had just picked up a ton of knowledge along the way. He strikes me as like the, a St. Paul type. He never oppressed anybody. He, he was never Saul, but, but he had that kind of amount of, of mastery of scriptures, and he could quote from any of the, the three main vehicles and kind of make it make sense and put it in context mm -hmm. and explain how things were connected in such a beautiful and poetic way. And so that for me was a really good place to start because, you know, my dad liked Buddhism. We had statues of Buddha around. I knew the four, you know, and the eight, the noble truths of the Eightfold Path, basically. And uh, that was that, you know, I mean, if you're old school Buddhist, you don't need much more than that. But, uh, mm -hmm. but I, but, I, but he was into all the Tibetan tantric stuff. So I got curious about that. And then, uh, but uh, but from but Dogen had a very grounded view on all of that. It was only it, it's almost reminiscent in a, in one way, not in the way of it being horrible. I like Zen. I think Zen is good, but it has one thing in common with fundamentalist Christianity, which is uh, that it's sort of a reformation after all the Catholicism and after all the weird you know some, and uh, right, and, right. and Mormonism and everything else. So so Dogen kind of looks with a perspective that is pretty harmonious with, I think, original Buddhism. Oh, old Theravada, old, what they call Hinayana, which is actually kind of a rude term for it. But you know, they, the old, the original monks, um, but he, he he's aspiring to be like the original monks, but uh, 
so, but he's aware of Vajrayana Buddhism and 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 uh, Shingon and, and Tibetan Buddhism and all this stuff, and the sort of basic, <laughs> basic bitch Buddhism of Imperial China. <laughs> I don't know what they exactly they were doing, you know, at that time. Sort of, you know, basic Mahayana imperialist, like, you know, the emperor told us to do this, you know, Buddhism, and uh, he went there and he he said they were all useless bags of skin. <laughs> He, he always calls people, you know, sorry. Um, okay. And so, yeah, so anyway, eventually he came back and uh, I, I think he, I don't know, he must have, I don't know the specific politics. I read the Wikipedia page on it once, but he got some funding or whatever. And, and so he was able to build some, uh, some temples and he would travel from one monastery to another and he would spend time at different Zen temples that he was raising and uh and teach the monks how to be proper zen buddhists you know as as he, as far as he had learned and he had unique insights that were sort of interesting and it's like where is this coming from and he talks about temples in korea that nobody knows what he's talking about so it's like hmm you know i, I always love those those unexplained things like uh, in japanese they call it yugen when you see the birds come out of the clouds and then go back into the clouds but you don't know where they came from or where they're going and uh so it's like those little threads of well that's something don't know what but it's something <laughs> like finding the indo-european uh the, the proto-indo-european root concept that connects uh vedic astrology with uh western astrology or something it's like oh right. it's there if i had a time machine and uh <laughs> you know but anyway <laughs> i don't remember what i was <laughs> what, what the question was or what the subject was oh yeah how did i become golden dawn i don't know <laughs> yeah i think I, I think i covered it right <laughs> and a few other things <laughs> i mean you yeah yeah um you know despite all you know like the crap and i know you know yeah. uh, talking with rc a lot and um listening to uh your podcast and and you know when you've been on with rc like i know you know bad stuff happened mm. bad stuff went down like you know you know it, it, you know toxic scenarios yeah yeah um, you know putting it mildly but you know there was but it was it was a good formative part of your life yeah you know like there, there was good takeaways i mean uh, the thing is and this was something that i i don't you know at the time i was thinking well if i weren't here at the temple with my forehead on the ground unable like not allowed to look up to behold the dazzling image of the third order chief that's actually Robert Zink in a like a funky outfit with a mask on talking in a blah, 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 you know um I I would be getting drunk with my friends at a bar somewhere and it's like well at least this is like interesting it's like an interesting yeah. story oh. here my, my <laughs> stepmom would tell me that it was like medieval you know that that I was living in a in a totally different millennium you know that, like a diff, you know the 12th century or something and uh, but yeah no i mean and and i guess all things considered what would have been the alternate me you know like who is the alternate universe edward who who left the order the first time uh, things got weird you know right. or things got uncomfortable or dark you know uh, what did he do? You know, like anything of note, it, you know, maybe I'd be a manager in uh, corporate America instead of leaving as a, you know, an assistant, you know, I don't know. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, I definitely don't regret it. I mean, of course, it brought me here in the end because uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I kind of like it was like a, a rubber band that, you know, that pulled so hard that, uh, you know, and, and like, uh, how how the how there's what i don't i'm trying to avoid using terms from scientology and neurolinguistic programming because i have all those terms in my head so i'm like right the reason i'm stuttering is I'm like is there another word i could use that won't make people think oh this is one of those nlp guys or oh he's a hubbard guy um but yeah no we we have uh anchors or implants we have engrams we have uh you know thetans in our uh big volcano or whatever uh no 
Um, the anchors, there was something there. Yeah, no, in India, it, there's nothing here to remind me of those days, I guess is what right. I'm getting at, you know? Yeah. Where, where, where you, know, the, you know, back in LA, there was always something there like that. Uh, so, so yeah, you know, they always recommend, uh, you know, if someone's gone through something traumatic that it helps to kind of like relocate, you know, and, mm -hmm. um, this is definitely a different place. It, it, it has the beach that's familiar from LA, but everything else is tropical instead of desert. And, uh, so it's, uh, yeah, yeah, I love it. <laughs> awesome. It's very, very refreshing and uh, getting, getting so much space from it. And then, you know, being able to witness everything that's happened in the U.S. from a distance, from the opposite side of the planet, you know, 12, like I'm watching something that's in, in the evening, I'm watching it in the morning, you know, I'm like sort of like out of phase with what's going on. And, um, and nobody here really cares, you know, like, I, it's funny because my friends back home would say, what do people there say about Trump? And I just laugh because it, we don't talk about Trump, you know. Like, yeah, it doesn't yeah. come up. You know, nobody's interested in American politics over here, <laughs> except as a yeah. joke every now and then. You know. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> we're a lot more aware of American politics and what's going on down there just because yeah. we're, you know, next door. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, people don't talk about America. I don't think. I think. Pe I think Americans think. Everybody Everyone talks about them talks because about of America Hollywood. <laughs> more than what we do. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And that's not really quite the quite the case. Yeah. 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 So it was nice to find out and kind of get outside that bubble and kind of be free of some of the, you know, now now I, I my my I'm second guessing how how do I put this in a way that won't make people think that I'm one of those I don't like PC guys, you know. Um, but it, it is nice not to have anybody give a shit what you say, you know, like yeah. it's just totally different here, you know. People yeah. don't yeah. hesitate to point out someone's physical appearance or or race, you know. Um, there's just no hesitation. So so then I, after three years here, like I start to stop feel, feeling all those little Oh, don't don't look at that person too long. Don't say that in that tone of voice. You know, as people, you know, it's whatever. You know, with people, you know, it's it really, mm -hmm. it's like the people here don't really think of themselves as Indian. They don't like actually personally, you know, like I mean, I'm talking about the people that I know, of course, not the people that I don't know. There's a lot of very patriotic, uh, you know, uh, people here, but yeah. but people kind of think of themselves as human. And, and have, having happened to be born here, it's like the same thing as when people break out of the gender norm or anything like that. Like uh, they, they realize they're restricted, you know, oh, I just happen to be born in this class in this with this amount of melanin and these parents and this last name. So therefore I can only fit in this box, you know, or because I'm uh, male that I have to be or whatever it is, you know, like I, 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 I remember hating all the shit they were playing on the radio or, you know, whenever you went to the, wherever to go shopping, it was just always someone whining about being cheated on or complaining about how someone won't forgive them because they cheated on them or why don't you love me? Or I'm going to kill myself oh, constantly, you know, it's just different yeah. beats and just continuously. And, and, the, and I was aware of what it was doing to me as it did it to me. And, you know, it was, it was interesting. But I mean, in retrospect, at the time, it sucked. Yeah. <laughs> I really didn't like it. <laughs> Why do I have to be this? That surely we're the, we're the most interesting, most conscious beings that we're aware of in the entire universe, the, the, the observable universe. And this is, we're, we're reduced to this. And that, you know, we're not allowed to step outside, you know, of this ridiculous little box that looks like a sitcom, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is bizarre, you know, when you, when you think about it in, in those kind of terms, like, yeah. like, you know, you think of the universe and our tiny place in it. Um, but yet at the same time, we're supposed to be the most intelligent life forms in the universe, Yeah. but yet this is, but this is what we're doing with it. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Like, it, really? <laughs> you know, like you're spending a lot of energy on this little issue. 
but yet we're the most intelligent beings in the universe. Yeah. I mean, okay, I, I guess. I mean, I guess you bought your ticket if you want to ra rant and rage, you know, like my, my dad yeah. in his book, Transformations, wrote, some are born again to make war. It does little to ask why this is, does the same to ask why not. It does, uh, what works is to remember who created it all in the first place. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> Transformations, John Mann. Uh, scriptures I have my own scriptures <laughs> that helps that helped me uh break out of the cult thing too and i think it helped me kind of stay like a like a duck you know has that the, the oil to kind of keep them from drowning um mm. I, I think sort of my dad's poetry and, and all that you know helped and my own poetry kind of helped kind of survive all that <laughs> right yeah, yeah, yeah. Mentally. <laughs> your poetry I'm trying to remember you talking about uh, your books. Mm, mm. Your poetry, did it uh, predate mm. your GD breakup? I can't remember. If oh, I yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. So I'm, it wasn't like a mm. post-recovery phase. There's a bit of that. There's a couple chapters of that. Uh, but it's it, it, there's two. There's one that I'm still finishing because... Uh, Basically, there's Taco and E Burrito. Uh, let me grab, uh, let me just grab it one sec. Yeah. So this is uh, 600 pages ish. It's about 800, I mean, 587, I think. Um, mm -hmm. And it's got the moon card. I don't know if you caught the symbolism here. Um, yeah. So this is a journey into my unconscious. But the first poem in here is from 1999. And then. The last poem is from 2017. Okay. And, and, uh, and, but there's like a lot in between, you know, years in between and a lot of, uh, uh, when I was working at Screen Actors Guild, I got into a flow. Basically one of my teachers, Gordon Bean, he told me that I should, uh, write haiku because he, I talked too much as you can see. Uh, and so, so, so he said, put it in a haiku. So what I started doing was writing run-on haikus, one run-on sentence that went from seven haikus. And, uh, but then uh, when the news, they, they, they would filter through the news and see what was relevant to the Screen Actors Guild. And then, they, so that we would know when the callers called, like what they were talking about. Mm -hmm. And so they sent it to all the employees and I would read it and write haikus and send it to like the hundred coolest people in the industry, you know, of course. And, uh, and so I did that for six years. So, so like more than like two thirds of these poems are haikus, sarcastic haikus about the entertainment industry, basically. <laughs> sometimes about the government or life in general. But, uh, but yeah, so I, so like by the end of it, you can kind of understand where I'm coming from when I rip on Tom Hanks so hard because of his position he took during certain, uh, political things you know oh, you just like froze again okay no start oh. start again you just froze again and i want to hear you rip on tom cruise tom oh cruise? Yeah, tom, tom hanks tom hanks yeah, yeah. so tom, tom, so a lot tom hanks had a lot of other well-known actors then they became producers they started making more money off of the movies they produced than off of the royalties from the uh the acting jobs they had when they were young so these, mm -hmm. these, these big recognizable names, when, when it came time for, when the internet, when YouTube came around and anybody with any sense of time and history and how quickly things were moving, were saying, we need to work out a contract right this minute that will guarantee the actor a certain percentage of advertising revenue for streaming anything on the internet. And the producers were like, nah, you don't need that. Why do you need that? You're just so greedy. You just want a little bit of everything. You just, we're going to give you this much more than you had before. And we're not going to talk about YouTube or Netflix or anything like that. At that time, there were flip phones. Jeep had a channel and Axe mm. Brand had a channel. So people were like, oh, isn't that funny? You know, like there's TV channels on the telephone, you know, or whatever. And so anyway, we all know how history went. So, so, uh, so, but yeah, Tom Hanks was the number one um, producer who, who 
disguised as an actor, you know, like a straight up wolf in sheep's clothing, who was recommending to his fellow actors that they, how, what's a nice way of saying that? Grab your ankles, you know, like, uh, you know, just just uh, take take what take what we I mean they you know like the bears, just give right. the bears whatever they want and just give us what I mean the bears whatever they want. Um, yeah, so I was I was really angry about that, you know, just because I mean all day every day talking to actors, I don't know, like I wasn't an actor myself. I, in fact, I was legally I I couldn't be an actor because I was working for the actors. So, but of course right. I. I, I was rooting for them, you know, I, I thought they should get their fair share of the big pie, you know, I mean, it's not like as noble of a thing as, you know, other, uh, you know, rooting for, but, but I, I was like, okay, I'm pro screen actors, you know, at the very least. And, uh, and so, yeah, so from, from that point of view, I worked on Tom Hanks and a few others. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> so, but that's, yeah, that's kind of boring unless that's interesting, but for some people, but there was some like post Golden Dawn, like uh, existential contemplation kind of things and a little bit of yeah. anger stuff, anger stuff while I was in the Golden Dawn, that's kind of like indecipherable or I would like jumble the words like you know using Burroughs cut method so nobody knew who I was talking about and I wasn't revealing anybody's dirty laundry but can you hear the dogs? Are you able to hear I sure dogs? can. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so that's Taco. I'm working on e Burrito. Uh, at e Burrito the first poems are from 1992 when I was 14 years old. And wow. Then, and I'm waiting till till April of uh, 2022 so that I can make it a total 30 years. So Taco and Iberito together will be all 30 years of poetry, which is kind of a fun feeling because all the poems I'm writing now are going to be in one of these two big anthologies that I'm writing. But once I publish it, probably I'm not going to publish another poetry anthology for a really long time. So it's it's an interesting feeling. I don't know how to describe yeah. it. So, so how did you uh, decide to split up the, your poetry into the two books? Yeah, it was unintentional. I, I wasn't thinking of Iberito when I published Taco. What I did was I got every poem I could find that I had ever written, and then I put it in here, and then I published it. And then I realized, oh, wait a minute, I've written poetry since then, sort of. Like I've, you know, made, I've had thoughts that were sort of poetically written that I wrote in journals. And then I started discovering other poetry from the time period between 99 and 2017 that wasn't in here. And then I found the older poetry from before 1999. So the, ch so the contents, table of contents is there's like before Taco, there's, uh, you know, Taco B-sides and then after Taco. And then one day, there's a, the, this is named after a poem called Taco. So one day I wrote a, a poem that had a similar flow to Taco and it was pretty poignant, I felt. So I called it Iberito. So there's a poem called Iberito. So that's the last chapter of Iberito is called Iberito. And so that's okay. the, one, the one that'll, as soon as April 22 comes, I'll try to write something that'll be a good closer, I guess. And then I'll just go ahead and publish it. And uh, awesome. that'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. I already have the cover design and everything. It's just is waiting for time to pass. And, you know, so I'm, you know, kind of getting into that empty head place, you know, where I can uh, receive uh, new things rather than rehashing old things. You know? Right. Yeah. Which is always exciting. That's always yeah. a good place to be. Yeah. yeah. But do you have, do you have an idea for something? Well, I've got three in the works Four. Uh, they, they, one of them is an older, it was a passion project from back when steampunk, uh, not steampunk, back when cyberpunk was new-ish, you know, like when, when the Matrix had just come out, I came up with this big epic science fiction story that just goes on and on and on. And then, uh, and then I didn't do anything with it. And then as time went on, I started to realize, okay, I'm using tropes, <laughs> you know, like when, when people started becoming aware of tropes, I'm like, okay, this is kind of like, all right, yeah, I'm guilty of this crap, this crap, but she's a Mary Sue and she's okay, you know, all right, mm. all right you know, but it's so, so I kind of got frustrated and, and then, but then off to the side of that, I said, but within that world, there's this one guy 
who's half gray alien, half human living on Venus, which is another story. Um, but he comes up with the idea for the interdimensional coffee house and he creates it. And, uh, and so then I started doing the interdimensional coffee house and I was like, this is, I was really passionate about it. In fact, the first chapter I wrote, I went and told my longtime mentor and teacher Gordon, I read it to him and he was just so inspired by the idea of a coffee house. Cause he, he ran the coffee house in Pasadena, the E-bar. There was uh, anybody from the, that was from, you know, the nineties remembers the E-bar in Pasadena. Um, okay. And, uh, and so anyway, that was, he, he was the inspiration for the, how much coffee I drink on a daily basis today, probably, but, uh, you know, but of course, Starbucks, you know, didn't hurt and, uh, gosh, these dogs. So anyway, so I read it to him and it's a, in this coffee house thing, there's, you can open a door to any dimension, any universe, any reality, past, present, and future. And he was like, oh, that's so good. And then I, I swear to God, this is true. I, I read it to him. He liked it. I hugged him. I kissed his forehead. I left. He got into bed, and while sitting up, looking forward, eventually he died, like just within a few hours, like, like it was planned. He didn't lay down. He wasn't sitting in his wheelchair, and he wasn't laying down. He was seated on his bed. Gosh, you know, I mean, and, and he was on kind of a level that I wouldn't be surprised if he chose his moment of exit, you know, like, like right, right, right. it happened to be right after I read the, the, the first chapter of the interdimensional copy. So for me, I had this passion to go forward with it. And then one day <laughs> I, I became an Uber driver because I couldn't make ends meet teaching yoga only. And I had kind of like burned bridges with the Screen Actors Guild by that point. Um, you know, I, I, I got, I was there for 10 years as an assistant trying to apply for a promotion. And then the right. last, the la then they had a merger where they fired half of everybody. And then, then I applied for a promotion again. And, and there was a, like a new HR lady. She was very condescending and matter of fact and robotic. And I just lost it and started yelling at her. I'm like, I think maybe this is, this place isn't for me. You know? <laughs> so then kind of like in my, my mea culpa, you know sort of uh i'm so sorry that i yelled at everybody you know i i you know i i just said i i need help do you have anger management so they were like sure so then i was in my car during my lunch breaks talking to a disembodied voice and that was fun you know uh but uh then i you know i think i was already doing yoga by then but uh but that became part of that sort of anger management and uh, mm -hmm. and so it's funny because people see Oh, I thought you were a yogi. Like if, if I lose my temper, you know, someone someone pokes me, and then like I'm like, hey, fuck you, and they're like, well, you're supposed to be a yoga, you know. I do that because I'm an asshole, not because I'm a serene person. <laughs> like I want right. to be a serene person. You know? It's like a path to get there one day in the infinite, you know, like border of the horizon, <laughs> ever toward the horizon. Kind of thing. <laughs> so. People always it always amazes me um, people, um, you know, like like the, the occult community or whatever, and they're always so surprised when, you know, like a like a an author that's well known or you know, like like authorities um, <laughs> are actually human and they have right. human emotions. You know, yeah, everyone's yeah. so shocked and they get offended that these people are just human emotions i'm like wh what are you offended at like are you were you you know looking up to a robot right or, yeah you know sometimes, I, I, I sometimes that's like sometimes the leadership of a cult will cultivate a sense of detached uh, you know uh you know i'm i'm on another level you know i can't associate yeah. with you because it'll make my spirit unclean you know or some weird I don't know what, um, and so they do it to themselves because then then yeah. they act human and people say, "Hey, you! I thought you were a god. You told us you were a god." But then sometimes the student wants you to be a god, expects you to be yeah. a god, and then yeah. they project it all. You remind me of Jesus, therefore, hey, well, you know, you did something imperfect. Uh, that means you're the devil. You know, like you don't, yeah. you don't get to be human. You're either here yeah. or you know way down there. So. But then, you know, some folks do really abuse their power and then they use those very words to try to talk around it and <laughs> then sliver their way out of it too. So there's that. <laughs>
So no, we can be assholes and still be, you know, adepts or high priestesses or, or whatever, you know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah. at the end of the day, we're human. You know, I talked to, um, I'm going to pause for one sure. second. All right. And we're back. All right. So, yeah. So, so let me do that thing that I was going to do real quick. Um, yeah. So I didn't, did I, am I repeating myself? Yeah. For people who think that when you're a podcast host, that that means that you should shut up and stay in the background and just ask your questions and then give the guest plenty of space, you know, and that the best that a po that a podcast host can do is to improvise questions based on what the response was. Uh, just uh, go ahead and turn off now and listen to something else because we're gonna we're gonna break out of that um, imagined uh, formula that is necessary. Uh, like the, the the Robert McKee formula or whatever, because I want to know a little bit about you, Sean. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. How did you first get into uh, Golden Dawn style uh, magic? So when I was a teenager, I, uh, I first started getting into magic when I was 14 and um, witchcraft. Uh, so this was 1992. So this was the era of you know, Llewellyn Publishing yeah. and we had know, all the same books, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Wicca and Witchcraft were the same Buckland's, thing. Uh, and, encyclopedia. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there there, you know, the, these are the books where there was no there was no differentiation between Wicca and and witchcraft. And you right. know, so when I And it was so, not strict Gardenarian Wicca. Like uh yeah. like like California Vinyasa. Yeah, to, is not Ashtanga Vinyasa, not Patavi Joyce. So not Gerald Gardner, but definitely influenced by it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So, you know, when I, when or I say like, him. yeah, yeah. When I, when I talk about like this, this nineties era, mm. if, if I'm saying witchcraft or Wicca, it was back then it was just kind of the like, same. Yeah. you know, marketed as, as all the yeah. same. So that's yeah. just, it is what it is. Yeah. So, you know, I, I kind of went through a phase where everything, every subject in, you know, the metaphysical store, like the books in mm -hmm. the, the metaphysical store, was all something that needed to be absorbed and, you know, like, like crystals and, and aliens and, um, you know, uh, paranormal, like it was all... Everything you'd find on Gaia today, yeah. Yeah, it, it's all together, and I need to know yeah. all of this, and 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 blah 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 blah. And of course, that's not true. And a lot of you know the more new agey stuff um, never really resonated. Mm -hmm. So you know, with that whole like, well, every book, every subject in the new age or the the metaphysical store, um, I need to know about uh, included the Golden Dawn, and I remember picking up. Um, I can't, oh, which I can't remember if it was Israel Lagarde's Golden Dawn, the sixth edition, or the rituals of the gold. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I picked up a book on the Golden Dawn and I'm trying to read through it. And like, okay, the language on the paper is English, mm. but it's, <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm it's like I'm reading a uh, a dialect of English that I have yeah. no concept of. Yeah, and you know, at one point I picked up seven seven seven, thinking that would be a uh, you know a very helpful, useful resource. And so I'm flipping through the pages. I'm like, oh, here's that weird English dialect that I don't know how to read. <laughs> um, so that kind of um kind of set on on the bookshelves i don't yeah. throw away books i don't give them away so you know um and every once in a while you know pulling them out and being like I, there's something like i know i need to absorb this i know i need to understand this mm. but i i don't know where to begin not really and it was a little bit uh donald donald michael craig's um mm. magic helped a bit with kind of like putting some pieces together ish yeah 
and then turns out Guardi's Golden Dawn, and mm. I understood this language. Yeah. This, this 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 dialect of English in this book that I just couldn't because some some words and references and concepts um that were 16 I now understand at the age of 25 because I've I've just had read so many more resources yeah and the funny thing is so I joined a Gardnerian coven mm. when I was 19 and it didn't really resonate with me because I found it too ceremonial mm. like at that time I was looking for like a, I, I always call it like a rolling around in the dirt kind yeah. of kind of uh tradition which led me to uh um druidry to oba the the order of bards obates and druids mm. so i wanted that very like like you know rolling around in the dirt like spirituality which i mm. got and you know oba uh, was very fulfilling in that regards um and not to say like I didn't like ceremonial stuff. It's just that's not what I was looking for. Like 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 as a main thing, to, yeah. To, to learn in mm. at the time. So you know, opening up one of my Golden Dawn books at some point, you know, in, in my twenties, and be like, oh, I I can understand this more. Mm. And then I got uh, self initiation into the Golden Dawn by the Cicero's, mm. mm -hmm. and I decided I would work through that book and there's good things to say about that book there's I don't know if I would say bad things to say about that book but RC um kind of uh describes it well he said it's a better book for someone for like a hierophant mm. of a temple as opposed to self-initiation into the golden dawn which he has a point because yeah that's true if somebody's starting from zero then it might be a bit much. But if you slowly take it like a textbook, then maybe, you know, it'd be a good way. Yeah. But maybe better than joining one of the shadier, you know, manifestations. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, if you don't have it, like if you don't have a temple in your area that's easily accessible, or if the only temple you have is from, you know, shady mcshady town yeah <laughs> i would say you know you know work through the book instead yeah. yeah um but you know the thing is like so you know you're you're working through the grades and they present the uh the initiation rituals in they don't change them into like a, a really more workable uh, set of rituals for an individual mm -hmm. and you know they're suggesting like okay you're not going to have the grade officer so you know uh, build the wands and mm. the wands are stand-ins for the great officers right but they don't in that book they don't go through you know the construction of all the, the temple right you um, have to get a different book for that <laughs> so, so they're like oh and all this can be found in uh secrets of the golden dawn temple. yeah yeah so i figured that they would you know in this book the secrets of a golden dawn temple they would be making suggestions like oh you know, you don't have tools, you're not a carpenter. So here are alternative ways to kind of wing. No, oh no. They're like, oh, you need a jack saw and and <laughs> uh and a band saw and uh a PhD in woodworking yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh metal cut like like I'm like, what? So all I did was I, I got dowels and mm. I and um um like poster board and i made the heads of the wands out of poster board and i glued them onto the dowels i'm like nice you know back then it's like is this even gonna work now it's more like it, i have the frame of mind more of um do what you can do do what you need to do to get the mm. job done sort of concept yeah. You know, because I, at that time, couldn't have made all those wands the way the Cicero's are, you know, giving instructions. Right. It, it yeah. just, I, I, you know, so I, I worked through that book and um, it was hard. And, um, you know, so you get to, to Portal in that mm -hmm. book and... 
it kind of felt like hitting a brick wall. Hmm. Like not walking into a wall, like slamming into a wall at 100 kilometers <laughs> Being hour. initiated into the wall, into the surface of a wall. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, I was living in Texas at, hmm. at this time. And then I lost my work visa. The, the Americans wouldn't renew it, oh. which meant I lost my job, which meant I technically had 14 days to leave the country or else I would technically be an illegal alien. Mm. So I had to come back to Canada to be able to re-enter the U.S. Mm. as a visitor, which I can do so for six months without having mm. to leave again. Right. you know just so i'd be able yeah. to you know you know um pack up you know um take care of my you know affairs you know and 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 then yeah it, it was a good thing like it turned out to be a good thing because here i am back in canada um unplanned and like well what am i going to do now and i just said i'm like i'm not going to work anymore you know like there's mm -hmm. there's no point you know i'm 34 I, you know, I, I've done enough, so <laughs> I'm done, I, you know, and um, I ended up, you know, starting my my little company, Lelo Gonzalez, and now it's a big beast. And nice. uh, what do you do besides the X uh, LVX files? So my my company is called Lee Loken's Alwyn, and mm -hmm. Lee Loken is uh, my my druid name. Like when I when I took initiation with Obod, mm -hmm. and Alwyn means creativity or inspiration. So Lee Loken's mm -hmm. inspiration, Lee Loken's creativity, whatever. So I go I'm by Woodian. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'm, I, I'm, I, oh. I think we had a '90s druidry took the name Woodian. <sighs> I was given the name Gwydion um, in, in the uh, Gardnerian uh, coven. Nice. Anyways, nice. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, so I make um, uh, beeswax and mm -hmm. scented um, spell candles, uh, loose incense, stick incense, liquid incense, anointing oil. So this now, this is where it's like like the the silver lining because when I was fifteen in entrepreneurship class in high school this was we you know our big you know semester and project is we had to come up with a theoretical business and this is mm. what it was oh cool and I'd forgotten about that until years after i started mm. started the business i'm like oh yeah. wait a minute that's what i wanted to do when i was 15 how interesting <laughs> nice um yeah so it started um you know uh there was a you know, an occult shop here that was selling my products. I was selling online. Then I got uh, a distributor in the States, then in Canada, then in Australia. And then most recently, thanks to some Anakian magic, I got a distributor for, for uh, China and Hong Kong. Nice. So, um, oh, yeah, cool. so it keeps me really busy. A little yeah. too busy at times, but it, yeah, it keeps me busy. There's about 400 stores. 400 wow. stores that uh, sell my products. How cool. So, oh, that's yeah, great. It's, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. So well, I need I'll definitely to look into that and link everybody. Uh, so now, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And so now, basically, like my whole life really um, is, and especially during the pandemic, because it's not like I, you know, can go out or anything. Mm. um like but my whole life literally is um doing magic you know mm. like i have my my daily rituals that hi everyone thank you for listening to the lux files i'm not just the host of this podcast i'm also the owner of lay logan's Owen. i make beeswax and scented spell candles, loose stick and liquid incense, anointing oils and bath salts. So once you're done listening to this episode, why don't you head on over to my website at www.leilokanzawan.com and check out my products. For your convenience, the link to the website is also in the show notes. You know, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty good at, at doing without, uh, um, 
you kind of, oh, oh, yeah, I'm lazy. I'm tired. I don't feel like it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm pretty good at avoiding that. You yeah. know, so I have my, and that'll vary. You know, if I'm really, really busy, if I'm slammed with orders, I'm not going to get more than an hour of daily rituals right. in a day. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, but yeah, like, it, you know, on a day I can, I can, you know, three hours of daily ritual and I'm literally in my, my ritual room, um, doing magic with, with making the products because they're all charged and, yeah, you know, planetary day, planetary hour and all that uh all that fun stuff so that's great yeah all i do is magic really how great yeah. congratulations yeah. <laughs> do you work with uh yeah. the crooked path down in burbank is that they one of your 400 not that i know of now okay like yeah because so the bulk of my business is mm. i sell the distributors and the distributor okay. sell to before I got the distributors like I had some stores that I was wholesaling to so obviously I know those ones yeah. otherwise the the only right. store the only time I know yeah. if a store carries my product is if yeah. they contact me and they're like oh we love your products or you know like they they tag me on social media or whatever yeah, yeah. otherwise I just yeah, yeah. you know I I don't know like I used to well, I used to do this a lot back at the beginning. I used to Google Lelo Gonzalez all the time to see what <laughs> stores would pop up. Yeah. Uh, I don't do it anymore just because, I mean, the, like, I'll never be um, over Satisfied. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> or over, like, yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. it's no big deal. But yeah. the, the sort of, like, excitement of of Googling and seeing what pops up isn't so much there anymore because you know i'm now in year seven of the business mm, and yeah. you know it's just gotten so big that i i know i know you know uh, you know the days where i'm working like 14 hours just making product and packing product yeah i know it's selling somewhere <laughs> you know so i don't yeah. i don't you know I don't have to be like, oh, how many stores? And uh, that's good. Yeah. Uh, how cool. So the LVX files has something that's killing me. Is the, is the yeah. LVX files is the newest thing then? Yeah. I, uh, uh, my first um, episode was on Beltane of this year, May 1st. Mm. And um, I had uh, RC as my first. Mm hmm it because um like i said i had i had the idea of the podcast in my head for you know so long and he's like yeah. do it do it do it do it, do it. and he, <laughs> you know uh, 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 there's more of us got to be out there yeah, so I yeah. thought, okay, okay fine but that means you have to be my first guest <laughs> so we ended up, yeah yeah so we had a marathon conversation we talked for like four and a half hours or was it long no four and a half hours because mm. he had me on his podcast prior to that and i think we went like five hours or five oh and a half gosh. hours <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a it's a very long episode and yeah. i was hammered for both of them mm. so i don't remember lots about either episode because i was just so drunk so what, what's and, your uh, favorite oh sorry sorry no, I was just going to say it, it, it's a lot of fun. And yeah, yeah. I think the only hard thing about it was deciding on the name of the. Oh, uh, well, you've got such a good name. Well, it's, it's kind of like a play because so instead of calling it the LVX files, I call it the Lux files mm. as a play on the X files. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the logo, you can kind of see, well, I mean, it's the same font, but you yeah. can kind of see, you know, that, that correlation. Um, and yeah, so, and then I just took some liberty with the LVX formula and um, just calling it Lux. Just yeah, that's to, perfect. Yeah. Just so it kind of sat Lux files, X files, just so it kind of, you know, it has that play. So, um, cause I had another, uh, 
idea uh, name for the podcast in mind as well, which I won't say because I think it's still very clever. <laughs> um, and I can, I, I may find use for it. Yeah. But just the tone of my podcast, this name, the, the Lux Files, reflects it better than what the other one would have been. Yeah. So, good. yeah. And I, I'm loving it. I'm having fun. <laughs> yeah. with all of these conversations and um you know learning about people but also learning things you know mm. so yeah. yeah and other perspectives on the same thing and uh it's like showing a movie you've seen a hundred times to someone who's never seen it and then you get yeah. to experience it kind of through their eyes and it's like yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. seeing it for the first time you know i, I it, she laughs at me because if i if i put something out there like uh you know uh, video or whatever a podcast and then somebody clicks heart or says oh my god this was so good then i have to listen to the entire thing as them <laughs> i never ever ever listen to uh when, when i first started doing the podcast i yeah. would you know someone would one of the guests would say something like oh my god this is so great and then i'd have to find it Mm. Uh, and make a clip of it and like post it as a clip as like a teaser like oh this episode's coming out tomorrow you know yeah uh, but the god the sound of my voice on recording <laughs> oh i feel sorry for the world um but i'm glad i don't have to hear my voice in that way so i won't listen to my podcast and that's why i don't even edit them because i don't want to have to mm. search and and hear my voice and yeah, like yeah right. no no i'm gonna hit start <laughs> I'm gonna hit start recording i'm gonna hit end recording and i'm gonna post it as a podcast episode well, i think you have a very good voice <laughs> oh ugh, no uh, <laughs> no not on recording no way I so yeah yeah so i won't I, I i won't listen to it i, I, I think won't. that's like the vogue thing how you know vogue magazine or whatever tells women how they should look and all that and you know i i, I and not everybody needs to be like a 1970s jazz station uh dj you know what i mean like um yeah. there's 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 various uh there's various uh types of good that, and and i i like the i like your type of good i like your type of voice it's it's similar to perfect you know, good no i love it I, 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 mean, I hope i hope yeah, yeah. Most people ha share your opinion because yeah yeah you know it, on my podcast you know yeah. so ugh, you know i just i don't <laughs> i don't like hearing i just don't like hearing myself in recordings so, yeah i i yeah. guess i guess i have to own up to like a certain level of uh sort of american narcissism and uh you know, like kind of liking the sound of my own voice. But in my defense, uh, there were this there were there was two incidents that happened. One was uh, when I was only maybe three years old, and the bird, the the African gray parrot, said "yeah," and my dad froze in his tracks. And my mom said, "What's wrong?" And he said, "That was my father's voice. He died in 1946." And she said, "That's that's your voice. That was the parrot." And um, and the thing is, the same thing happened to me. I had to say I had the same mm -hmm. type of parrot when I was an adult, and I and he said, "Yeah," and I I was shocked because it was my dad's voice. And so he was he was a, as I mentioned, the big college professor. I don't have any credentials of any kind, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a 200 hour trained yoga teacher, but other than that, you know, uh, I have a high school uh, diploma that makes a very nice mouse pad. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, so, but I have the authority, I have the gravitas, you know, that just sort of, I absorbed by osmosis, I'm afraid that yeah. always got me in trouble as a kid, but now I, you know. Well, you know, it's funny because I like doing the podcast, which means obviously I like talking, but I like, um, I love public speaking, like the bigger the crowd, the better, mm. uh, I love public speaking everything I just I love talking and you know and of course there's a certain amount of ego involved in you know public speaking like if 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 you say you enjoy public speaking then obviously like you like being the center, center of attention, attention. yeah you know? <laughs> yeah um, I started a podcast at, at some level somewhere in me 
is saying you have something that people want, obviously. Mm. So, you know, put out a podcast. Um, so there, yeah, there's, there's, you know, a, a level of ego to it, which is fine. It's yeah. just, I don't like hearing my own voice yeah, um, yeah. on recording. Mm. Um, I like hearing myself talk, <laughs> uh, um, but not back at me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think we took we took two mirrors and made it like a mirror refraction. The fourth wall is broken if there was such a thing. And uh, I don't know. How do we get back on track? We, we're talking about doing the very thing that we're doing and, and then overanalyzing it and talking about overanalyzing it. We've, we've gone into a corner. We've painted ourselves right. into a corner. <laughs> so okay, back, back to me. Back, back to back magic. To back to you. Back, back to, you. to me. Ask me another question. <laughs> So yes. I think I finished. I, I think I finished your question asking how oh, I got and into. And I had a follow up question. Much. What is your favorite flying role? You don't have to know the number. <laughs> oh Lord! I saw you were reading it. That's why I asked. I thought it might be fresh. I. I would have to say. I would think. Do I have a favorite flying role? Mm, yeah, that's a good question. Or I mean, maybe the first one that comes to mind. Probably the talismans. How to construct a talisman, I guess. Mm. Um, you know, uh, one thing that I, which is kind of funny because, you know, with my products, like everything is handmade. So yeah, I'm yeah. always creating. Mm. But one thing I realized um so like i'm very handsy i'm very you know crafty uh in in a sense because you know i'm making everything by hand one thing i had forgotten which i really learned recently was the joy of making things but in my case for myself, because I'm constantly making, I mean, like last year I made 18,000 products mm -hmm. for other people, Yeah, you know, and, um, uh, earlier this year, I, uh, made a new Lotus wand mm -hmm. and I had, and I, you know, I was sitting there, I'm like, oh, I've forgotten how good this feels creating for me mm. and um so like i've always liked making stuff like like talismans and and whatnot it's just i went through you know the, these past couple as the business is growing because every time i get like a new distributor it you know the business just explodes and i have to relearn how to run the business efficiently mm. you know what i mean so a lot of extracurriculars you know fall by the wayside plus two i mean to be perfectly honest my you know like my daily practice is kind of um routine mm. i've i i don't do a lot of um what you would call like say practical magic mm. i mean i i could certainly do more than technically than than what i what i do and you know i have been recently with all this like deep purist enochian we've been experimenting with mm. with um rc's hermetic mystery school Nice. Um, that's been really interesting, you know, mm. um, uh, exploring deep purist Anakian, um, cause it's just, it's just not what I'm used to, Yeah, yeah. you know, of ritual. And, you know, I like the, the, the pomp and ceremony of, 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 you know, full blown rituals and whatnot and everything, you know, being just so, and, you know, very step by step. And this is, you know, repetition of prayers and it's, it's very, um, I was just going to 
stay low tech, but that's not really the right, <laughs> right word for it. But it's, you mm. know, it's, it's low tech in, in, in magic. Now, again, I mean, you know, with the Anakin system, you know, you have the table of practice, um, you know, the, the ring, the llama, you know, so there's, there's a lot of tools associated with it, but we basically started like with this concept, like, okay, we have this one sigil. Hmm. Let's, you know, and the prayers, let's see what happens. And, you know, building, and when I say one sigil, like literally on paper, white paper with black ink, hmm. let's, you know, build from here. And, and it's slowly, it's this very organic process of, of building up the practice and, um, yeah, it's been very interesting. We've, we've, we've been getting some pretty interesting, uh, results, mm. um, with this work. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's been a while yeah. for me. I yeah. So getting uh, back to the flying rope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so oh, no, I was just going to say, so getting back to the rolls, I'm going to yeah. say talismans just because I used to make so much and, and even though I stopped just because life, you know, just, that's just how it happens. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, yeah, just because I like making. So there, mm. tell us, there yeah. you go. Nice. I was always a fan of number four. Uh, but for the poetry, I mean, it, 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 it's, uh, it's just fascinating. The one, uh, that was the one where uh, one of Crowley's wives, I forget her name, uh, the two famous women from the original Golden Dawn, whose names I should know, uh, <laughs> went into the vault and, and the path worked <clears throat> the empress and, uh, and they, they were shown the, the Holy Grail and there was a whole journey that led up to it that just was very poetic and very descriptive and beautiful and it's, it's just interesting. I mean, because normally... Was it, Mo it would have been Moina. I don't think it was Moina. Uh, it was and... Elaine um, Simpson and Florence okay. Star, so um oh okay yeah okay I think so could be um but yeah I mean because I mean the poetry I mean of course there's is a person could say that uh channeled poetry comes from the god you know but of course it has mm -hmm. to go through the brain of the person who wrote it down you know or speaks it and yeah. so it's it's interesting uh the, these words of Isis and flying rule number four, I can't help wondering if they came through Florence Farr or Elaine Simpson, is because they didn't say, because it's magic and it came from Isis, you know, so that would be like, you know, a stage magician revealing his trick in the middle of the trick, you know, like, I don't know, I mean, that's sort of a simple I would way. think it would have been Florence <laughs> Farr, because Probably. Florence, Florence yeah. Farr was um, in the sphere, and I believe that she was pretty active as a sphere yeah, as opposed so. to an operator um i'd, I'd have to mm. oh know, the seer oh stuff. oh that makes sense so, oh yeah okay so yeah i mm. i'm pretty sure she did she did more work as the seer than the operator yeah. so i would think if it was elaine simpson and florence farr I would think Florence Farr would have been the seer, but it's hard to say because she, I don't want to call her a control freak, but she liked, I mean, was authoritative. So I can see her being the operator because she'd want to ask very, I can see. But the imagery evoked in that is now that I think about it is kind of, uh, it's like a establishing of a dogma you know, like this is the new, the new, the dogma that, of the new Aeon, you know, or, you know, she wasn't using that term, but. Oh, wait, like no, a... she, she did the Egyptian rituals. So mm. I bet you she was the seer for, for flying roll number four. I bet you. Yeah. I just yeah. got uh, her book. Um, mm. uh, someone published it as, as a limited edition book. It's oh, very cool. small of her Egyptian rituals. Oh. And uh, it's a fantastic little book. So oh, wow. I'm gonna, yeah. So I'm gonna say she, she, I'm gonna say she was the seer. How is that book still available? 
Um, there's two Golden Dawn forums on Facebook or groups on Facebook that I'm a member of, but Facebook just uh, purged one. And I'm trying to think which forum this was on. Oh, I can go, I'll go through my emails. Okay. And, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You can tell me later. It's fine. Hold, yeah, hold on a sec. I'm just going to grab okay. it. It's Holly Thorn, Holly Thorn Press. Oh, okay. Yeah. So okay, it's, it's yeah. a little, it's, it's green. It's a fabric book. Mm. Uh, wow. It's, it's just, it's nice. It's all done in, uh, um, that seems you know, like a must have for, uh, yeah. I mean, and you it's know, all, it, it's all done just like back in the day with the, the black and the red text. Mm. And, mm. uh, yeah, it, it's a nice little book. It's, um, um, four rituals, the first ceremony, second ceremony, third ceremony, fourth ceremony, and then the SOS, which I, can't remember what that is. Hmm. Is that like yeah, whatever. To save our souls? It's SOS or different SOS? No. Um, the SOS stands for. Hmm. But yeah, it's uh, it's um, it's a nice little book. It's yeah, uh, yeah. So, anyways, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that Florence Farr was the seer for flying roll number four. How cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mm. How interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and I think um, uh, this was published in England and I think it was only like, it only came to like $50 Canadian, maybe. Maybe okay. not even that. Yeah. Well, I'll see if they'll ship it here. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes Google them, aren't available uh, here. Yeah. Google them, Hollythorn Press, and see mm. if you can uh, find it. Yeah. yeah it's a little book. Nice. Yeah, Taco is available in uh, India. I uh, Normally when you self-publish through Kindle, they're not, they don't print it in India, but um, mm -hmm. and, a, and a distributor picked up the option. And so now you can get it in India. And that's neat because it's a little bit thinner. The paper's different, but it's the same book, yeah. you know, and it's, right. it's from right. a UK company. So I have more uh, listeners of my podcast in India than I do in Canada. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, for a long while, it was US, Canada, India, then UK. And you can see India creeping up and up and up. And I'm like, wow. India's overtake Canada. And now they're, they're, yeah, so it's now, <laughs> it's now the US, India. Yeah. Uh, the UK then I think it's like Australia and then Israel hey if you're watching this in in India and you've listened this far you've been watching this far dude get on Facebook and write Edward Reed there's a there's a, a it says writer uh, you don't have to send me a friend request but there's a page a writer right you know join that say hey I just heard you on the LVX files I'd love to, awesome. you know, I'd love to know who's listening to this in India. That's right. Really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> nice. So there, I'm big in yeah. India. What can I say? There, there's an interesting sort of the other dot in the yin yang of, of uh, you know, white people into Buddhism and, and uh, Hare Krishna is, is the, uh, the Indians and Chinese and Japanese that are interested in Western occultism that are, they get serious enough into it that they want to know more about the brh you know like mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. um more about the 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 differences between the luria and kircher trees you know and it's like, oh okay you've gotten this far into it you know and the the, the sigillium diamet is like a fashion thing in in japan in like tokyo and stuff you'll see people walking around on the subway with the sigillium on a shirt oh, interesting. Yeah. okay yeah interesting. i think because they use it in some of the, the the comics like the lesser like uh trinity blood has the rosicrucian nazis like which is really weird um right but, right uh, you know <laughs> yeah and so people get curious about it they get into it you know and they go beyond pentagrams and and get into like real specifics you know mm. but I, you know, I, I noticed uh i met a woman from china in nepal and uh and i was talking about 
China, differentiating between Chinese Vajrayana and Tibetan Vajrayana, you know, and, and, and how the different, how Chan was in, that was a lot of that was new to her. But then she was able to explain to me, not only did she have the lyrics of uh, November Rain by Bon Jovi memorized, but she could explain exactly who it was about, when it was written, why it was written, and what was going on in his heart. And I realized, holy crap, you know, people just get interested in things that are <laughs> unfamiliar, you know, and, and, and become yeah, like, I mean, obsessively interested in it, you know, like me, yeah, like anyone I else. Mean, you know? We take for granted, you know, the things that are familiar. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, those those you know quote unquote exotic things from over there just <laughs> yeah. so much more exciting and more beautiful and yeah, more yeah. interesting and whatnot so <laughs> you know why you know that's not just a uh uh you know western one way yeah thing. yeah that's, cultural I think that's just appropriation yeah yeah <laughs> i think that's just human nature you know yeah. so you're going to go to china and they're going to be obsessed with bon jovi and really have Some, no idea, yeah. no yeah. real clue when you want to talk about you know different yoga techniques or yeah Buddhism. yeah exactly yeah it's a trip you know trip. that would be like expecting every you know white person to be able to quote scripture i guess yeah yeah it's true i got enough yeah. of that in golden dawn that i i can do pretty well i don't i haven't actually read the bible from cover to cover but i can uh i can tell the difference between book of matthew and book of john for sure you know? <laughs> right yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you do so you know because you had you know such a good experience with the golden dawn but also you know very problematic experience yeah. with the golden dawn what do you do when someone's like, well, I, I want to practice the Golden Dawn system of magic, um, but, you know, there, there's no temple near me, or, or maybe the only one that's near them is, is you know, problematic. Um, what's your advice to them? Like, like, you know, where would you say, okay, well, you know, this book is a good resource, or... or you know, mm. to kind of start, Gosh. you know. I I don't even think I would be qualified. I, I Because I never read the books, you know, I got it all from the cult, you know. And yeah. I was I was kind of, by the time I was, you know, uh, an adept, I was already, well, I guess maybe a year into being an adept, I was pretty jaded with the whole thing. Um, and then I stayed for another 12 years. <laughs> so, so that's a lot of books to come out for me to not be interested in. Right. Reading, you yeah. Know? And, and so I, I read all the Dune books. I even read all the awful, God awful Brian Herbert Dune books, you know, and, um, but I didn't read, uh, you know, any of the occult books uh, or any of the Golden Dawn books, um. I heard other people talk about them enough that I could explain the whole context behind like light bearers of darkness and, and how it fits into the grand tapestry of things, but I've never read a word of it. Um, so, so, uh, gosh, you know, I guess if someone was asking me if, for that particular advice, um, uh, ah, God, I, I, that's tough. I mean, because, it like, is a question because you can't, I mean, you can direct them to. Uh, I mean, there's modern regarding, magic, but yeah, but modern, modern magic. Okay. It's a, yeah, it isn't specifically technically Golden Dawn. Right. You can, you know, um, everyone's blasting um, the seventh edition of Israel Gardi's The Golden mm. Dawn. Oh no, you, you you don't want the seventh. You want the sixth. Well, but even my buddy there, did the, like, you know, half the illustrations. So I tell it. I say it. Seven. <laughs> um, well, there you go. Get the seven for the illustration. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and then self initiation into the golden dawn, that can be pretty, I don't know, difficult yeah. to work yeah. through. So, you know, it is, yeah, I, I realize that was a, a very challenging question for you. Yeah. I mean, if, you know, like I, I, 
I'm phobic of teaching Golden Dawn. You know, like mm-hmm. I, I always tell people when they say, hey, will you be my teacher? I'll say, I give them a link to the podcast and a lot of them don't like that. And But I, I do my best to explain and I repeat it on my podcast. I, I really don't, uh, you know, want to be a, a, be a, an initiator. Like yeah, technically, I would, you know, I, I, I claim the authority of a Golden Dawn chief adept uh, in what I do, which mm-hmm. is to do the esoteric nerd podcast, but I am not in any way interested in being in a pastos in a vault somewhere wearing blue. You know, I just I, right. I don't want I don't want that for myself in this life, and uh, <clears throat> that's where it would eventually lead. That's the thing is like if you initiate someone in a neophyte, you're risking one day being laying in a pastos with a vault around you that was built by a bunch of your students who, by the way, all kind of covertly hate you. You know, and it's like. What did you do? You didn't have to do that. You didn't have to teach them Golden Dawn, you know, like, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so, so, you know, like sometimes I coach, you know, like one person, you know, um, and I think I've mentioned it on my podcast and, and, uh, you know, we kind of go through the grades. We, we, you know, people subscribe or don't subscribe to astral initiation, you know, our order practiced it. Um, and, uh, so I was sort of just sort of in the habit of it. So, but rather than say, Hey, meditate at five 30 and I'll wave something in the air. Um, you know, I'll go to the trouble to produce a product for my student, you know, mm-hmm. um, it'll, I'll spend a day or two, you know, like making a three hour long audio to uh, immersive audio to, to, to advance a grade. Cause that's the best we can do, you know? And, uh, because there's no physical temple nearby him. And um, I, I don't have one either. So I just sort of do a guided pathworking style of, uh, of, of guided audio astral initiation ish, mm. you know, so it's yeah. not, you know, but it's not in any way uh, formal. And in fact, we take out any reference to secrecy in the oath right. and everything. And um uh, so it's just a vow to, you know, do the work with all your heart and uh, never mind the secrecy. <laughs> so, you know, I, I know, I, well, I, I kind of get in a way, you know, the, the whole, you know, debate and argument around astral initiations, mm. but at the same time, in a way I don't, because it's, you know, it's one group saying we don't believe in it to another group that's, that is doing it. So of course you, you just, you know, to me, it sounds more like, well, they're not good enough. Come spend your money over here instead. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, people are probably, if they buy self-initiation into the Golden Dawn instead of joining Zinc's Order, they're much less likely to be abused, you know. Well, no, that's true. <laughs> so I can understand their point. <laughs> but yeah. is it yeah, really yeah. about astral initiation at that point? It's just about, you know, like the the wise the wise one trying to keep the child from going toward the creep you know yeah yeah <laughs> it, it just it just sounds you know like the the whole argument i think at the end of the day just like i said just sounds more like two competing groups and one group is like oh you don't want to go there they do astral initiations yeah. it's you know, so cut like a, so come yeah. come with us and spend your money on and us. It's Thaumiel. It's it's Thaumiel instead of Typhir. You know, it's it's uh, the the air the the pride of being right about a cult's doctrine that yeah. we see demonstrated by so many people who carry the GH. Um, I hope I'm not one of them. Maybe I am one of them. I think I am one of them. But my, I have a nuanced point of view. But uh, you know, mm-hmm. I don't have a dogma. You know, but yeah. you could say no dogma is his dogma. But, um that's silly but uh yeah it's uh people people want you know those those people don't know what they're talking about not only should you not join their order they're they're just totally ignorant about what they're even teaching they don't know they don't know the first thing they've made up half of it and they got the other half from catholicism well that's all true but you know (laughs) it's rude to say just because it's true doesn't mean it's right I don't know. I, I I don't know if I'm just I'm lazy or just old, but you know, getting into you know the the bickering and the oh well we oh. do and that makes oh. us better and right. they do that makes that from the outside just, it just looks absurd. Being it, inside it, yeah. it's like you know being inside it. You know what can you do? You know, 
it's a it's a different type of brain a different you know a different type of thing being inside it you know where you yeah i don't know how to describe it it's it's frustrating it's frustrating when you know it's wrong but you do it anyway you know right because because yeah. because if you don't you'll get in trouble you know it's like so many layers of fucked up like yeah. i have to curse at poke runyon on all magic otherwise you know the chief adept will or you know like trying to trying to prove something trying to be the most aggressive trying to be the most publicly self annihilating you know like like letting your name be destroyed in the name of standing up for the creepy cult leader like to to prove to something you know to prove something it's weird it's it's stupid. Yeah, yeah i mean it's it's a it's an it's like it's like mental i i, I don't want to insult mental illness by saying it's mental illness it, it's uh it's a bad program i mean i i also don't want to sound like i'm not being sympathetic toward people that are in that situation you know i'm just i'm only being overly critical because i was in that situation so i'm kind of like self flagellating mm -hmm. a little bit you know so but but it's a real thing god you know it's a real yeah. place to be and they think they're doing something good i don't know it's like but they, but then it happens between political parties and then it's like ah, okay it's just a stupid right. human thing stupid human tricks <laughs> yeah and yeah and i mean you know these or orders are full of stupid humans because we're human and we're stupid i mean there's you think no that they're special and not normal stupid humans well that's, that's the problem even worse. But, yeah that's the problem but you know don't well that's easier said than done i say you know don't you know they want to be put up on the past pedestal don't put mm. them there you know yeah. because they're only up on that pedestal because you're putting them up there and you're mm. holding the pedestal up but that's easier yeah said than done oh, you know i ran into at least two that i if i wanted to drag someone through the mud which i don't I could tell two very detailed stories, but I'll just say, generally speaking, that there's a mm -hmm. certain type that joins these orders that kisses the the anus, you know, kisses the ass of the whoever, you know, the leader, the person they think that they should uh, be tight with, or something, the person that can get them in to those right. higher levels because they thirst to be put on a pedestal themselves, and they think they yeah. deserve to be put on a pedestal, and if they were a you know, proctor, they would, you know. <laughs> get get the put you know crack the whip and so they they yes sir yes when do you need it what time should i be there yes i'll be there right away oh i i think i'm ready to test what do you think and then they get to philosophers and they're psycho nazis it's i it's like right. they the whole time literal wolf and sheep's clothing again they're just like the master ah uh, ah uh. I, you know, because th those people are there. It's like the culture there because those people exist. And, yeah. and uh, the, the many aspiring cult leaders that do, some of them become the big ones, you know, and whether it's in the big crystal cathedrals and evangelism or uh, or whatever, you know, it's it's like, yeah, a certain type of, I guess it's psychopaths, right? And they figure that out. It's the psychopath gene that, that if you, if you're abused, if you're a psychopath and abused, you become a killer. If you're psychopath and loved, you become a CEO or, or Tony Robbins or something. And it's like, okay. So they have a place in the mammalian order, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> scary. Scary. Yeah. Good old King David. I don't know. I don't know what to do with us. <laughs> I really don't know what to do with us humans at all. Yeah, yeah. Oh. We're a little complicated. Yeah, a lot. And yeah, that's the good gets back to the, the most complicated thing we have ever seen is one human brain. And uh, <laughs> let, let alone, and there's 8 billion of them. And <laughs> right. Yeah. So people try right. to talk about the stock market. It's like, well, let's get back to trying to predict the weather. That sounds like it has a <laughs> more promising. Yeah, yeah right <laughs> you know um rc calls it hogwarts and mm -hmm. you know in in a lot of ways it is and yeah. you know there, there's so much good and there's so much of value to to teach and pass on um and you know yeah it, but yeah but then you get egos you know people that can put their egos aside but well people are there for their ego yeah you know a lot of them which you know if if 
you're there for your ego, then obviously you're not going to put your ego aside. But there's so much potential, mm. uh, so much good to share and teach. Um, it's just unfortunate that you just have to deal with these, you know, assholes all the time. It's the shadow, you know, I, I mean, they, in the order, in the cult, they would talk about it as, you know, the, the group alchemy, uh, you know, whatever, that it's the, uh, when you're in the current, then you go through the processes that the order goes through as the order goes through them. The word egregore is defined on Wikipedia as, as, as having been defined by the hermetic order of the golden dawn as group think. <laughs> we mm -hmm. use it all the time. Egr oh, it's a different egregore, you know? Yeah. Um, but, uh, oh no, I did it again. I think I was going somewhere with that, but I, I don't know where. <laughs> I, I was I was talking about, you know, like the good and the, yeah. Uh, yeah oh, yeah. Oh, well, one thought I was having was about the, what is, the, is it the Ennead? Not the Ennead, but the, Enne the, 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 the nine gods, the, the tenth one being Horus, uh, the original Egyptian gods that the whole, at least the Z formula is based on. It's interesting. Some folks speculate that kind of the the dramas that unfold in various incarnations of Golden Dawn orders kind of are re reflective of uh, the drama of the of the old Egyptian gods, and so it's kind of like built into the system mm. a little bit. Maybe everybody wants to be Osiris, and then uh, they end up. They, they, they're married to Isis, they start looking at Nephthys over there, and then, they, <laughs> and, and, you know, things, things happen according to the, <laughs> the mythology, you know, at least maybe, maybe not, maybe not. I mean, these, these you know, these mythologies ha have, you know, universal, you know, concepts to them, so it's easy to, you know, look at those. Overlay, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, and find, you know, modern equivalents, of course, mm. but you know would the golden dawn be trapped in in those mythologies i i would the I sria be interesting if it was injected with some fresh like sort of ignorantly translated uh you know rosetta stone uh you know uh papyrus of ani you know, I mean, I, that, we, I, that was an abstract thing to say. I'm sorry. The Society Rosicruciana in Anglia, who's heard of them? You know, you and I have heard of them, of course, because mm. of the history of the Golden Dawn. They still exist. But yeah. uh, but they but you took that and, and Freemasonry and then, you know, uh, Budge, uh, you know, the old uh, hieroglyphic uh, stuff that was pouring out that was all the rave back then, of mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then this magical thing came to life and people people wanted to believe that you could walk into this imagined Egyptian religion you know that that they were dreaming about and, and telling their kids stories about so much that they just made it come alive and it just there it was the current and then uh then everything went from there Curly went that way and Case went that way and every history went on but there it is and there it still is and uh when so, sometimes people go back into that old pyramid into that old egregore that old current and one of them plays horus and one of them plays set you know one of them plays osiris and and uh and they created the golden dawn transformative experience that maybe was transformative for ancient ancient priests and pharaohs that uh that that then in turn were the teachers and grand teachers of Moses. So it's like, mm -hmm. it's pretty mind blowing, you know, like yeah. how deep it goes. Um, so it kind of goes deep into the self and deep into the collective conscious. And then with the, with the cult dynamic, it be can become a very interesting Petri dish sort of sample microcosm of, uh, the, of, of the processes that the world is going through right now. I mean, cause I remember the internet was brand new when I joined the, that golden dawn order we were being told not to look at the internet not to search golden dawn on the internet or read what they say about golden dawn on the internet and we were like okay this is 1994 you know like the, yeah. the internet you know you search what's that oh well you can search for things oh okay yeah and maybe then there was the naughty adept that was like come here you know and i'm like okay what's this and he says it's a search engine he's like okay and he writes 
how to make LSD and hits enter. And then he's like, that's, see, that's how you make LSD. You want to make a bomb? <laughs> see? <laughs> I mean, you're kind of like making me aware that like, okay, so you remember, you hear what he just said about not searching for golden dot, like don't listen, you know? <laughs> so there were, yeah. there were cool adepts that were trying to keep trying doing their best, you know, but uh, you know, they became the fallen. <laughs> oh, right. Of course. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. I do like um, all the schisms, though. It's I think interesting. It adds a lot of color. Yeah, I, I think it, it's healthy, you know, yeah. to keep thing alive. And I mean, the thing is, I think if there wasn't a schism ever in the Golden Dawn, I think it would be by this point probably a still very secretive, probably pretty stuffy. Um, tired yeah. order yeah. you know well like give me a give me catholicism and the catacombs anytime that sounds like a party jesus i would love to to get in on that and you know it, back in ancient alexandria or something but uh but today oh well, no i mean it's fine you know I, I, I like it but i i don't like their politics but i like the singing yeah you know? yeah yeah, yeah. Nice, you know? yeah. <laughs> but yeah i mean same I, with golden dawn like you get you get a group of people that uh you know like a bit they, like a friend they i didn't know that the order that i joined was basically start established in 1989 uh ish mm. around then uh with a group of you know a few people and um uh, and then but it had got going so that by the time i joined in 93 it was so 11 11 93 uh yeah it, like i mean it was in a house it was in a garage but it it was it still had the that youth that that youth momentum sort of the foolhardiness too yeah. and uh you know but what a silly idea to like think that someone who's only been in the position of guru of a golden dawn temple for four years is any kind of saint or you know yeah. like anyone but just <laughs> someone who's looking it up in books of course you know where else yeah, are you gonna but, get it yeah but did he you know say to you guys you guys knew coming in uh as new if I, oh four years ago i picked up a book on the golden dawn right. and i thought it was pretty no cool. that i had to piece that all together a lot later yeah, yeah i mean i'm sure he has a very um very complicated uh line of succession story that makes him the one and only right uh, oh yeah yeah living. exactly yeah yeah yeah. yeah yeah there was an adept from uh from from alpha and omega in chicago that uh that initiated this guy that happened to be the same guy that taught him how to use nlp to uh get girls to sleep with him in bars in the 1970s and uh you know lvx then thus it is we are legitimate lineage of the uh of the greater matters so, yeah there you go there yeah, you yeah. go I, I would have more respect for someone that's like um uh me and these three other people we've been you know working practicing for a while and we've we been working we this book on system from this yeah. book and mm -hmm. we've been doing it for a couple of years and we want to build a temple but okay, if you want to, if you want to claim supreme executive Mathersian authority over your Golden Dawn order, then you must have the one and only link to the unknowable third order, and uh, and, and that we get our instructions from them, not from me. I'm just a vessel. I've right. sacrificed my life. You, they, <laughs> they, you have to do what they say. All I do is ask them what they say, and then I tell you. <laughs> Don't look at me. I just wear the. <laughs> like a lot of a lot of bullshit a lot of bullshit yeah yeah i mean it, you know it, it it's that you know oh uh i'm no longer christian because of you know x um you know pope and, and you know blah 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 and mm. like but you just you just you know swapped one pope for another yeah, yeah. you know like like you you really need to take a step back in in your actions and decisions i know it's hard mm -hmm. but you know when you when you choose something or you're going to choose something you really need to step back step outside yourself and really take a hard look at the situation yeah. and say you know what is the likelihood that of this guy that has a 
temple in his garage that he, is the one true and holy he, yeah you know but but 1994 was a different time you know like in uh, 2001 2002 you could go on google and find out and not only that but find out what people have to say about this guy that you're signing up with but yeah you know we nobody like that i guess the news groups were going on that's why they were trying to steer people away from the internet because on alt magic the uh, the people that had already been been burned by that group were out there airing all the their stories right. so but, but but it's crazy that, that to think that there was a time when you could tell your cult not to look at the internet you know like it's 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 interesting so it's like a petri dish of the world kind of watching it grow but by yeah. the time uh, all that crap on facebook was happening like one of my jobs back in the day was was uh you know to create a bunch of fake ids and then go muddle up the conversations where people are complaining about our, our group specifically and then make it seem like they're talking about this and blah 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 reframe the argument you know um so then when i saw you know fox news doing it it was familiar and then when i saw all these idiots on facebook doing it it's familiar and uh you know but i'm glad to be like watching it from the outside and not sweating yeah. in it <laughs> yeah for sure for sure yeah. I, what where in where in canada are you thunder bay uh, so i'm in um uh province of ontario it's the biggest mm. Uh, mm. province in, in canada mm. i'm on lake superior so i'm kind of thunder bay is like like central canada mm. yeah um far from our sea like okay uh, it would take me i think like two days to drive to rc closer um, to the thuban temple wh where's oh uh i'll have to look that up there uh there's somewhere up in toronto maybe yeah maybe uh it's frater yeshi i think frater yochinyo um, oh yeah do i i'm trying to I'm trying to search my memory. I kind of feel like, and you know, I, I talk so much about, you know, this adept and this order and da da da, and how they, they, you know, they split and split and da da oh, da da. da. Okay. So now I'm trying to think if I, I feel like I had a conversation or maybe listen to one of RC's podcasts mm. about I don't know that kind of rings a bell yeah it looks like they've I, changed form since I last looked they're called the Hermetic Society of the Golden Dawn now uh but at the at the time that I interviewed him uh, I interviewed Frederick Yeshi and it was the uh the Thuban temple and they were talking about wanting to create a society of various golden dawn orders so it looks like he succeeded um because now it's it seems to be like they're saying these are books published by members of the society and it's books published by different people from different orders so it's like okay okay he's he, he what what he was envisioning was uh you know there's so many places and people that are you know they're in the colorado temple so it's like what you know, what if you're in New Jersey? Oh, well, there's Golden Dawns there, but they're different. But wouldn't it be nice if you could, you know, go to a, if you're a practicus in the in the Colorado Temple and you're in New Jersey, you could go to a Theorcus initiation and witness uh, and in a different order, technically. Wouldn't that be cool? You know, so sort of yeah. like these, these dialogues that they were having between uh, East and West uh, splits of the, the old church, you know. Uh, right, Greek, right, right. Greek, Greek and Roman and all that. I know, I don't know if it still exists. I know at one time um, the Cicero's Order had a temple in Toronto. I don't know if it's still oh, there. Yeah. And, and um, um, there was at one time a Holy Order of the Golden Dawn Temple. Yeah, yeah, I know that guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, there's that. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, so where I, where I am, what's that? There was Horace Temple. I think he was in Montreal. Uh, he still is, I imagine. But, uh, there is um, who? Uh, which order? Oh, uh, uh, well, he's uh, he he's hails from Zaluski lineage. 
Yeah, but he um, he he and RC and I were we're all fratters together once upon a time. Oh, before. right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So <laughs> so that's that's in Montreal. Yeah, I forgot about mm. that. Um. So where I am is uh nowhere near anything else <laughs> on the planet. Yeah. So I would have to drive eight hours either way mm. to reach another large city. What's your closest U.S. state? Minnesota. So Duluth is four hours drive south from mm. here. And then from there to anywhere else is... Is there a time um, in Duluth? Not that I know of. Yeah. Yeah. But of course, I can't cross the border right now, anyways. Oh, uh, right. Oh, yeah. Of yeah. Course. yeah. Um, so yeah. So like Thunder Bay, like we have a population of like one hundred thirty thousand. Mm. Um, so it's not huge, but it's not tiny. But there's just nothing. Like I said, like I'd have to drive eight hours west to Winnipeg or eight hours yeah. east to Saint Marie to um, reach another larger city. And when I talk about, you know, reaching Sault Ste. Marie, I'm not talking about reaching the metropolis. I'm mm -hmm. talking about reaching, you know, another city of 90,000, which in a way feels more isolated because they're just kind of like out of the mountains that mm -hmm. are, like, mm -hmm. that, you know, become very impassable in the winter time. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, there's nothing here. There's, okay. there's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's nothing here. And there's not going to be anything here. Yeah. Um, I couldn't imagine, like, if if I, you know, was to, to be very public and be like, you know, let's start a, like, a Golden Dawn group. Yeah. Or, I don't, I, you know, I don't know if it would, be like, even, you know, well, no, I wouldn't. Yeah, no. So, like, a Golden Dawn group, I don't see anything really seriously blossoming from yeah. that yeah um yeah i i just think like you know if, if you got to the point here where like you know oh great you're interested in the golden dawn you know um uh you know 10 other people and they're all newbies and like you know this is this is the amount of work that goes into the golden dawn mm. don't see it just, yeah, it, it wouldn't happen. And then you're like, yeah. let's, you know, let's build a temple. Let's whip out the tools and... <laughs> Start you know, having practice and getting officers and... Um, yeah, it just Thunder Bay is a very um, relaxed kind of, you know, we're not into doing the extra work kind of... Uh, place yeah you know what yeah. I, um, I, I was thinking of, i wonder if it, anybody's ever done this but like uh if someone had enough money or whatever can connect kind of connections to like actually hire uh, actors and then direct them to perform a neophyte initiation then um you know like and then someone comes and they join and they they go through the initiation and then everybody's Part of the part of the act is that after the ceremony you hug them and then then you leave and you never talk to them again. <laughs> and then it turns out you just initiated them into a two-person cult oh, you <laughs> by hiring all these actors oh. to be them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought I thought you okay, that's funny. I thought you were actually yeah. going somewhere. Like No, I like, mean so you, it could be done theoretically, I think. I well, mean, I don't well, know if it'd be legitimate, but it'd be convincing. Well, if you had someone that um you know, if you had an adept, mm. that, it. yeah, because I mean, you can still do all the god forms. Yeah, you can do it for them. Yeah, I mean, that would be interesting. To, yeah, it's an interesting thought experiment anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I, you know, like when I work through the, the self-initiation self -initiation book, um, I'm not sure I knew what to expect. Mm. I'm fairly certain I wasn't thinking that I was literally going to self-initiate self-initiate into the Golden Dawn Current. Right. Um, 
I think it was more of an idea of being able to um, work the system of magic, mm. you know, um, all the bells and whistles, so to speak, and, you know, yeah. have, have a, a, you know, a very fleshed out, very cohesive, very effective system of magic to, to mm. work in. Um, RC thinks I did. Mm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I, I well, it sounds like you did. I wouldn't make a claim either way. Um, mm. Just because, you know, if I was like, oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm pretty convinced I, I did actually self initiate into the current. Mm. Um, I know I'm just gonna, you know, like if I, if I said that on Facebook, I know I'm just gonna open myself up to every, you know, um, <laughs> every golden dawn or, that you know claims uh a but for every uh, for every closed-minded scribe or pharisee as it were that uh that wants to gatekeep and you know uh uh, uh preserve their lineage money whatever um mm. yeah they, there might also be one who is inspired to also uh self-initiate into the, the the current of the golden dawn so I don't know. It's just something to consider. It's, no, it's, it's, it's better, better the better this and ignore that thing. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they might clutter it's, up the comment thread. Uh, that's annoying. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah. Um. You know. That's why I don't mind talking about it on my podcast because you know I'm 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 interacting with you know uh you know like minded people. Yeah. Um. Whereas, and you know. It doesn't, it's not that, you know, negative comments bother me. It's just, I don't want to deal with them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like at all, like I, like even to the point where like, I'm not very much into blocking people on social media, but I don't even want to take the, the time or the effort to delete a stupid comment. So, so I'll, you know, I'll talk about it, um, you know, in my podcast or like if I'm on someone else's podcast, um, I I won't make the claim because honestly I don't. Know, but maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Either way, what I'm doing works for me, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah, and you know, regardless of what you know system you want to work in, you know, what kind of magic you want to practice, then just do it. Because mm. sitting around waiting for you know your holy guru or right. you know the the big wonderful order or mm. temple <laughs> the one <they're>, true <laughs> yeah i mean there's no golden dawn temple that's gonna you know spring up here in thunder bay um mm. <laughs> ever so <laughs> it's I, i'm not gonna sit around you know waiting for that to happen yeah. um you know i i worked hard through that book and you know it's yeah it's, i think I some think people go through physical initiation and even all the way up to portal without getting very much out of things sometimes it's surprising and i wonder how it happens when people go up and they do a brh backwards and they're in the higher grades because i mm. what, your proctor wasn't paying any attention at all you know I, that's so sad yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah well that's the thing i mean w when you're in an order it's not even just about your progress isn't even just about you anymore it's about mm. your your teacher or your proctor or, or however that that arrangement the system is, and... is because if you're doing a brh backwards yeah or invoking then, instead of banishing and that's how you've so, always done it and, uh, yeah well okay. it's felt a tag. It <laughs> yeah yeah progress. somebody should have pointed that out to you <laughs> yeah 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 you, you know so it's it's you know it's not just i mean i'm sure there's people that you know have gone through these these orders and they've kind of like coasted through without yeah. getting substance out of it yeah. um by by but, uh by parroting the whatever dogma that the that the leader sometimes it happens that way where yeah. you can bypass actually studying the knowledge by uh by affirming the 
opinions of the of mm. whoever's in charge. That's so obnoxious. It's just such a basic trick, and it's it's like the 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 leader is foolish for falling for it, and the person doing it is foolish for using it because nobody benefits. Right. Yeah. 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 It's like cheating in high school. Like, okay, what are you going to do with that A, you know? <laughs> you know, well, I, I get cheating in high school. Like, if, if, if it means... If you're trying to get into college, yeah. But there's no yeah, college at the it, end of Golden Dawn. Except yeah, for the RNAC, but come on. <laughs> yeah. Um, if if, if the, your alternative is to fail this class, okay, I get, get the cheating Yeah. Um, yeah. In, in high school. But, like, say, cheating at a... As a rule. Game. <laughs> Or cheating, yeah. like you're playing a like a board game with yeah. friends, and you cheat. Like I, I don't understand where you get any sort of satisfaction out of your win. Cheating at D and D, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I rolled I, a twenty. I, yeah, I don't, I don't know how you get satisfaction out of that win because you didn't win. Yeah, you know, yeah. um, you know, and most people really are bad liars. I'm less offended about being lied to mm -hmm. i'm more offended because people really aren't good liars yeah. i'm more offended by the fact that like i know you're lying right now <laughs> as you're speaking to me so i can only assume that you think i'm so dumb yeah i don't see it so mm -hmm. i'm more offended by that than i am yeah by that you're you're lying to me so no i know you're cheating <laughs> yeah. so i don't know how you're celebrating your win when you didn't win because you cheated and i know you cheated i i don't get it i i just i don't get i, yeah. I don't get that mentality mm, yeah people yeah <laughs> but you know i guess you know i i guess i just became a superior person once i cheated <laughs> once I initiated into that golden dawn current. So. That's how you know it was real. Yeah. Yeah. Clearly. <laughs> so it's gotta get my crown and off I go. Confidence. Yeah. Confidence is key. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I you know, I don't know if that's uh um I don't want to, yeah, I don't know if, if that's a lack of confidence, um, you know, not wanting to have an opinion or state an opinion. On, well, it's an um, awareness of the, of the peanut gallery. And uh, if some of it's assumed, some of it's not real, some of it is in our heads, but some of it is real. You know, it's the, it's the, that continued awareness of the, I guess, the superego that, that takes the form of the, 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 the social media networks now. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, and it, it, for me, I, I, I got some physical distance from it and some time distance from it. And now I've finally arrived in a place where I really don't care, you know, like, uh, yeah. but, but, I, but I definitely, as being an individual uh, who no longer is practicing with a traditional Golden Dawn group, my personal group think, <laughs> my personal think, my think, I guess you could say, <laughs> you know, my way of thinking has drifted mm -hmm. too you know and and it's it's definitely influenced by golden dawn as well as other things and uh, yeah and you know i can teach on a golden dawn subject but it'll have a nuanced perspective and i like mm -hmm. to bring uh, because nuanced nuanced perspective is one thing that i felt was always lacking so so i i i tend to emphasize it more than other things than 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 the the actual teaching so that kind of makes me not the greatest teacher unless somebody is like abstract enough to like receive a meta you know a, a meta commentary coupled with a sarcastic criticism of golden dawn while they're being initiated you know so it, it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it must be a challenging path to walk you know sorry <laughs> sorry brother yeah uh, anyway <laughs> that's funny that's funny uh, life we're yeah we're interesting creatures yeah yeah everybody's pretty unique some more than others <laughs> yeah you know at the end of the day i was just like i'm just gonna do the work and yeah that's 
you know, that's really all that that matters. You know, you guys can yeah. be back and forth on on social media, hashing out who's right, who's wrong, who's superior, who's inferior. You could spend all day doing that, knock yeah. yourselves out. At the end of the day, I'm just going to do the work. And at the end of the day, I think if there is a question, which there is not, but if there were a question, it would be who at the end of the day, when they say Ata, connects truly with the eternal unknowable. And that, uh, you know, and that's like not something you can argue about on Facebook or it'd be really dumb to argue about on Facebook. And, uh, right. and, it, and it kind of makes everything else as in perspective, in, 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 in proper perspective, you know, it's the little blue dot as Carl Sagan said, it's, it's, yeah. it's much less than the little blue dot. The little blue dot is the whole world. And that is just a little comment thread, you know, <laughs> it's, a, exactly. it's a little glitter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Well, I like it. I like the work that you're doing. I like the work that you've done, and and you have Thank my you. seal of approval as a, a fellow esoteric. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, yeah. awesome. I think, I think that just made me a chief adept right there. Yeah. So yeah, right there. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think everybody ought to be the chief adept of their own order of one. <laughs> Once um, it becomes an order of two or three, then it gets a little iffy. Right. But. <laughs> I'd rather be a neophyte <laughs> in that situation. Sure, be like, yeah. let someone else, let someone else do the hard work, um, yeah. and I'd I'd rather learn something new. So um, <laughs> once my order of one becomes an order of three, I want to be the student. <laughs> I yeah, want to be the one. I want I want to be the one not doing the work. Yeah, that's so the, true. The administrative work. I'll do the work. Mm. Um, but yeah. 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 When I came here, I became a student all over again. It was yeah. like being being born anew. And just, oh, it's fantastic! Yeah, it really yeah. is. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the student role is the best. Yeah. Uh, you know, I lead all of my group rituals, and um, I I don't know where the uh, well, you know, the people that you know they want to be the leader and da 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 da. Yeah, that's because they've never truly led. Because you know, you you know, I'm I'm running, you know, our group rituals, and I'm like a stage director, mm. and um, you know, you you can't just be in the moment. You have to be making sure, you know, everyone's lines are, you know, are down, yeah. and you know, they know where they're supposed to be, and if they're not where they're supposed to be, you know fix that and yeah, if, yeah. You know, if, if they've lost their their lot you know what i mean um <laughs> you're just not existing and just experiencing anymore Honor you know Hageman, please circumambulate halfway around the temple to your position <laughs> at this time it's all yeah. about improvising with the with the same gravitas and authority yes right yeah. <laughs> as if it were a screen um, line. <laughs> yeah which, I mean, Hageman, you know, do your fucking job <laughs> I mean, you make it work. You make it yeah, work. Yeah. You know, it's not that that things. You know, the ritual. You know, is destroyed. It's just yeah. you have you have to be on top of everything. You you're not the one just kind of like existing in the space and experiencing it. Yeah. Um, you know. So yeah, I much uh, I much rather be a student. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And on that note, um, on that note, eternally students, forever yeah. neophytes. Yeah, I, uh, I guess one thing I'll do that'll be a little bit of fun, maybe, is I'll give you a little tour of my office. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, there that goes. Uh, so here in the West, I haven't quite, you know, made it to the eagle stage of the. Uh, the energy of, uh, you know, the West. That's humor. And see, you've got, you got a trilobite. Can you see all this? Yep. There's a little bit of a, a Taoist thing happening here. And then I've got my, uh, 
Oh, I like that. This is India. <laughs> so you've got you've got Sri Ramakrishna, who is in large part the, you know, he would agree with this altar. Um, and then we've got the Catholic prayers and Buddhist chants and Sai Baba and Islam and Devi Buddha and Catholicism and uh, and here we've got science see here we've got the periodic chart mm -hmm. we've got every everything that's not radioactive and uh stones and small trains and uh let's see what else one one other thing here in the uh south we've got padma sambhava and his his buddy vimala mitra and uh, uh Very incense nice. incense and candles <laughs> Yeah, just a little, and we've got the little library area in here. It's a good space. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a nice old Portuguese mm -hmm. style. Old Portuguese style, and it, it's familiar from California because we have old Spanish houses. Here they have old, old right. Portuguese houses. But they're yeah, the same yeah. style, but they're newer. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good place. And it's not made out of wood, too. So nobody's afraid of their house catching on fire, which is like a whole new world for me. Everything, why do right. we build everything out of wood? I don't know. I never even thought to ask the question. <laughs> yeah. So anyhow. Very nice. So that's fun. So yeah, everybody, buy my books. Thomas and the Wolf. Yeah, absolutely. I, I never even talked about Thomas and the Wolf. <laughs> um, where, okay, so... People can go on Amazon to mm -hmm. to buy your books. Um, yeah. uh, this this uh, Thomas and the Wolf is a good one. Yeah. Oh, you like it? Have you read it? No, no, no. Um, you remember uh, me talking about it? Uh, you you kind of went through the whole story yeah, about yeah. it, and yeah. I, I'm not I'm not going to repeat it because I think people should just buy it and read it because it's really really good. It's available so. on Kindle, $2. There's no excuse if you have Kindle Unlimited, it's free. You can just go to Amazon right now. In fact, if you go to Amazon and search for R-E-I-B, that's my last name, um, mm -hmm. there's not there's not much on Amazon other than mine and my dad's stuff under that name. So you'll get my dad's okay. book, my dad's book, Transformations, and Thomas and the Wolf. And after you've read Thomas and the Wolf, this is sort of the sequel to Thomas and the Wolf because uh, there's a character called Samuel. And uh, that's all I'll say about that. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and yeah, so yeah, that's a nice plug. I don't need to talk about any more than that because I don't want to overwhelm people. Okay, and there's this and there's this and also by this, but no, 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 just Thomas and the Wolf. Thomas and the Wolf, keep it simple. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, but everything, but uh, all of his books are up there on Amazon, so go check yeah. them out. And yeah. uh, you're you're on Instagram, um, mm -hmm. Pymander uh, Aquarian on Instagram. Yeah. Um, anywhere else uh, you want people to follow you? Facebook, because you yeah, have your uh, art. Well, Facebook. I have. They, the, yeah, the thing is with it, people, thing. people, people who are interested in occult things are drawn toward esoteric nerd. For me, esoteric nerd is you know it's precious to me but i i'm doing a lot of other things right now and uh yeah. sort of also on the side sometimes five percent doing esoteric nerd so if you want to see what i'm doing where i'm putting my energy where my heart is right now uh th there's it's more the edward reeb stuff um so on facebook there's the edward reeb page with where it's edward reeb writer and right uh, and and so all my poetry recitals of uh from e burrito and taco and uh video travel videos uh videos where of the Dhar dharamshala in shanghai and interesting music videos and things like that um and uh yeah the uh, there's a page called goin goin g-o-i-n g-o-a-n g-o-n-e so goin goin gone uh okay. that's a youtube channel my wife and i do uh where we make fun little short naturey videos of uh goa yeah, it's just that. So if somebody goes to edwardreeb.com, that's edward-reeb.com, and that's R-E-I-B, then uh, you'll see all that stuff. It says author, yoga, podcasts, movies. And so Perfect. you can explore. I There are rabbit holes. There are multiple rabbit holes in uh, edwardreeb.com that you can go down. And I recommend all of them and, uh, and, and have fun. <laughs> 
good. And I'll, I'll put I'll put those links in the show notes. Oh, sweet. So, oh, thank yes, you. Yes, everyone can just you know click and go from there. So it'll be simple for them. So Sounds perfect. Great. Sweet. Awesome. So it's nice uh, talking to you one on one this time. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, that the uh, the uh, with the uh, Hermetic Mystery School, I'm not saying that wasn't good. I'm just saying, like, right. Uh, being able no, it's to good. nice to take the time to okay. yeah talk. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for for having me on LBX uh, Files. Po- I mean, Loops Files podcast. And if you're and see, listening and to this the- on. And see, that's the funny thing. It's, it's, uh, you know, I purposely said uh, originally I was going to do Lux, L U X, because mm. so people would say the LVX files or say Luke's instead of Lux. And I'm like, you know, I, I may be, I may be kicking myself in the butt here a bit. Mm-hmm. um with this name um because <laughs> but whatever oh no it's fine whatever i mean i like lvx it files is personally it, but, is. it is. Uh, looks files works too yeah and if you're yeah. listening to this on esoteric nerd check out his other this is episode what only episode eight right no this is episode uh 28 oh 28 okay okay 28 yeah, yeah. Cool. and this is episode 109 of, of uh esoteric <laughs> Awesome. My favorite yeah. number. Oh, good. No. <laughs> no. Adds up to 10. I'm just, so, so I'm, Agent I'm, Cooper I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Well, I got my tea, so I think that's my that's, cue. That's my excellent. subtle signal of, uh, hey, are you done? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Coming from uh, the beautiful... Uh, well it's getting late where you are i mean here it's just mid-afternoon but there yeah. it's over it's midnight now so yeah it's 12 you. 22 but we usually stay up till yeah. at least two so it's all good yeah <laughs> well you go enjoy your tea and i'm gonna i don't know what i'm gonna do uh the rest of the afternoon because i don't feel like doing anything now well be sure to send me this and uh i'll take it from there and i'll send it back to you perfect excellent okay. all righty Okay, okay, well, very you nice to have, meet you. Uh, yeah, you I mean, too. And, no, I mean, not uh, meet you, talk to you, you know, like, meet more, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We met before, yeah. but. Uh, it's all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he's known. It's all good. He's known. <laughs> uh, anyways, you enjoy the rest of your evening, and okay. uh, yeah, everyone, take care. All right. Uh, what Bye. am I doing? Yeah, perfect. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> thank you for listening to this episode of the lux files you'll find all the guest links in the show notes as well as the link www.laylokanzawin.com slash links that link will get you to my page of links where you can then go to my laylokanzawin website the lux files page and my laylokanzawin youtube channel that has all the lux files videos It also has all my social media links there so you can follow me and the Lux Files. And don't forget to subscribe to the Lux Files wherever you get your podcasts. And lastly, if you enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving me a review. Until next time.